There we are. We're live. Yeah, we are. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome along to another weather. Uh, great to, to have you joining us. Um, we would have been on earlier, but we were just watching uh, Ian and Dave uh, have their own little chat. And <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to interrupt the, uh, the little bromance going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he's got a nice drum. Oh, he's all he's uh, he's on shore, so I'll have a nice drum poured soon. Awesome. Yeah. He's driving to Glen Drawnick tomorrow morning yeah. and staying at Roth. Oh, you've got a few drums in Roth. There's uh, some cracking places up there to to have a wee, wee drop. So, Indeed, absolutely. so excellent. That sounds, that sounds like a nice wee trip. Tempted to come up and join you. And uh, good evening, Willis. Nice to have you on. I love that you still got your uh, Glengarry uh, profile picture on after you debunked Thor. the cat. Thor with the, <laughs> Thor with the hammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, guys, if you're getting confused, we are, we are streaming, uh, as we do every week, on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you don't see comments come up, we're talking about Chances are it's uh, because we're talking about the other um, stream. Uh, Mike is back today. Yes, I was back last week, James. You missed me last week. Uh, I only missed the, uh, the David Stark. <laughs> I, I thought you were there last week, James. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just that memorable. I'm that memorable. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a moment near three hour session I had last week as it was, well. <laughs> it was so long. He probably thinks that was maybe three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Russell, what's in your glass today for you? I have, so I, I was kind of looking forward to one of these, um, but I thought I'd finish it at Christmas because it was one of my Christmas bottles. Um, and I was just having a little rummage through the cupboard tonight and I found, I found it at the back. I thought, oh, wow, you beauty. Um, so I'm, I've got a wee drop of my, uh, my Royal Brackler um, 18. Oh, nice. Uh, Paulo Cotado finish, uh, which is just beautiful, full of citrus notes, just absolutely delicious. So, yeah, so I thought I'd uh, have a wee drop of the King's Own Whiskey. As, uh, as it awesome. first... well, I'm going to open a bottle tonight, and this one uh, I got our friend uh, Vangelis. Oh, is from... this from? Yeah, doing from. But he was doing it. Yeah, one yeah. of the uh, distillery exclusives. So this is five-year-old first old Tony Port Hogshead, fifty-eight point one percent. I am taking it easy tonight um, because I. Um, Obviously, we've got baby due in, I don't know, very soon. Um, so I might be on call for, for driving in the morning. She seems quite comfortable just now, as in Tony. So hopefully <laughs> that, that's not going to change anytime soon. I thought we'll wait until uh, she's settled. Uh, uh, and if worse comes to worse, we'll get a taxi. So there we go. So, James, if there, uh, it, might, it might just be me, me and uh, our guest uh, later on. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure listen to, listen to that neck pour going in there. So good. Lovely. I think I mean a lot of people have a thing about a neck pour, but um, I, I, it's, it's the best sounding pour of the of the ball. But you get the best. You, you get the best glug. Yeah, exactly. You get the exactly. Best glug. Yeah, the the theatre's best with the neck pour. <laughs> sure. um, Dave's on his infinity bottle with Mrs. Tilly's whiskey fudge. So if yeah. I remember last week, Dave was having a dram with. Christmas cake. And we weren't sure if it was the actual Christmas cake left over, or if it was a bottle of the um, the Aeons and Digging and Fire version of the Christmas cake. But yeah. I don't think there's a whiskey out there called Mrs. Dilly's Whiskey Fudge, so he's definitely on the fudge tonight. Cool. Uh, um, right. Let, let's uh, let's stop here and get our guest on. Right. I suppose uh, we have with us Joanne uh, McInnes. As known as the Whiskey Lassie. Good evening, Joanne. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Good. Very How are you? well. Excellent. Excellent. It's still daytime here. It's not night. So. I was just to say, what time is it in uh, New Brunswick? 3 p.m. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Mm. Oh, it's afternoon then, so it's not too early for a van. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's funny, as I was watching you both pour, it was like, throw off the headphones, run for a glass. <laughs> so it's like, I get to drink whiskey at three. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Of it's all work. Is. Yeah, it's all part of the work, isn't it? That's right. One of the deep perks of the job. Yes. So, uh, it's research. I tell my mother it's it's research. Exactly. <laughs> and every day, every day is a school day, so 
Uh, yeah. Sure. So I'm We've drinking. I, I decided to do something completely different. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a, I'm going to try to say this correctly. Drek. 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 Yes. Drek. 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 As in, not very nice. As in shitty Drik. day. Yeah. Drek. 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 So I'm uh, I'm pouring something I think that's going to warm me from the insides out. Oh yes, um, one of my favorite yeah. one of my favorite value for money whiskeys. Uh, yep. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, it's part of my collection on a regular basis. So I'm never without a bottle for those. I've got that. The house. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Good health. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's yummy. Mm. It's the best way to start a conversation, isn't it? Absolutely. Straight into the whiskey. Right. Yes. <laughs> and it just gets everything going in a nice, even keel, doesn't it? Everyone Certainly does. Back and enjoy it. Have that weed dram. That's beautiful. Russell, I'm going to have to bring some of this in for you at the weekend. Cool. Um, Joanna, I don't know when and if we'll ever meet in person. I hope we do. Uh, we'll try and keep a dram on this for you as well there. Sneak yeah. one off to Canada. Um, Paul comes over fairly regular, so I'll maybe sneak one back with him and he can get to you. Uh, before COVID, I was going over quite regularly, actually. So right. my my goal is to get over there maybe once, maybe twice this year if I'm lucky, and then, and then continue on with my usual coming over, schlepping around distilleries, again, more research, yeah. and uh, right. writing interesting articles, visiting festivals, meeting people. Excellent. Yeah. When was the last time you were over then? Was it 19... October 2019? Yeah. 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 Wow. I did. Uh, we did a tour of Scotland. We spent a week on uh, Isla and uh, did quite a bit of touring around in the in the Speyside area and then down towards Edinburgh, Glasgow. Then I flew over to Ireland and spent two weeks over there. Then I went to Portugal and then I flew back to London and landed in the middle of the largest Brexit parade I've ever seen in my life. So it was, it was a, it was quite a memorable trip. Yeah. Yeah. Was that pro Brexit or was that anti Brexit? I, I, I'm going to say it was pro. No, 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 no. It was anti. <laughs> it was anti. The person I was sitting with on the train was, was, was pro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was very confusing as a Canadian. It was just very confusing. Uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty confusing for us as well, to be fair. So, <laughs> <laughs> it still hard is. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Hard time understanding what anybody was trying to like what the goal was, what it was. Like we're just we're just, you know, we're just a commonwealth. What do we know? I mean, we just, you know, we have the queen's <laughs> name on our money and we just, we drink whiskey and we're happy. Give us Putin. Like we don't know right, exactly. anybody. Drinking whiskey is exactly it. Cause we, we always make a rule that, uh, well, it was one of these things I started doing when I, when I was doing the Zoom chats, the Zoom tastings uh, during lockdown was that there's absolutely no place for politics. And unfortunately, because I love sport or sport on a whiskey mm. tasting, you keep it all about whiskey. Because it just could, it could just go so wrong. <laughs> yeah. <any> <laughs> so you have just got to keep you. these things there. But but you're you're clearly into your sport as well, though. Yes. Just to, just to touch on it, what's what's your uh, sport of choice? Uh, although I am Canadian, and to my father's detriment, God rest his soul, I was never a hockey person. I absolutely oh. love uh, soccer. What what you would call football? Yeah. And uh, yeah. what we call football. So I love yeah. I love uh, North American football, and I love European soccer or European football as well. And of course, Canada got to the World Cup. In they the did. Canada. We didn't do very well. We got one goal. I was happy. Uh, but yeah. you know, we we made it. I don't. I can't. I can't remember. The last time we were actually there, I'm sure it had been a while since. Yeah, we you did there. better than us anyway. We, were, we didn't even get there, so. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, we're used to it. We're, we're, we're now we've grown up, uh, quite used to not being at these big parties. Well, you have. Yeah. You have. I have. have yeah. You're really yeah, awesome. I'm 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 old enough to remember that we used to qualify for every tournament. Uh, when, uh, 
when I was younger. The, the first one I remember is 1974, which... Uh, oh, Yeah. Okay. Wow. But that's when Scotland used to completely and utterly underperform. <laughs> we had a great team and we yeah. absolutely just stank every single thing. And interestingly, the funny thing is what we used to always do, we, we would lose the first game and we would win the second game with a chance to go through and then we'd end up drawing the third game. And we would always be the team in third place that would get knocked out. Yeah. Right? Never last, always third and knocked out, always the unlucky. And I just noticed mm -hmm. <laughs> the Scotland women team did exactly the same in the last tournament they were in. <laughs> So I thought yeah. because the women are just as good as the men, they're getting because they're getting knocked out in exactly the same way that the men. Exact same up. way. But well, they were like three 0 up against Japan, weren't they? In the last group game, they were three 0 up and coasting it, and then threw it away. Yeah, we had lost the penalties. Yeah. Yeah. Very Scottish. That's a Scottish way to lose. Very Scottish way of doing it. <laughs> I mean, we might be crap at football, but one thing we are very good at is making whiskey, I suppose. So we can always fall back oh, on yes. that. Oh, yes. oh yes. yes. The rest of the world is very thankful at how wonderful you are at making scotch. Thank you so much. Indeed. Indeed, absolutely. And, and I suppose not just making it, but um, transporting it and, and getting it into markets has been, and that's probably what we've done better than, than anyone else um, historically. Mm, maybe not so much now. Uh, Post-COVID, I find uh, here in Canada, I can only speak about my own country, but I, it, it's getting more and more difficult to get our hands on um, what we'd even consider, I don't want to call them bar rail, but like the, the really great stuff that we, we love to drink, like um, even something as simple as teachers. Teachers yeah. is being delisted in some of our provinces. And uh, the way it works in Canada is like every province has its own, I don't want to call them an anarchy, but they have their own like liquor laws establishments yeah. where you can purchase where you can't purchase and uh as a as a, um, a category that the canadian market is is uh, we used to be considered in my humble opinion because i've been drinking whiskey for almost 40 years now uh we were kind of like a guinea pig market so if like something new was coming out it's like let's throw it to the canadians and see what they think and then if we kind of liked it they would send it to the united states or in other markets and mm. uh even that's getting more and more difficult. I think um, yeah. we have we have an organization in, in Ontario, which is like the biggest province, and they're called the LCBO, and um, they're they're a nightmare for any distilleries or or uh, companies that are trying to come into Canada. They're they're just a nightmare to handle or a nightmare to try to get into, and um, I think they're the biggest alcohol purchaser in the world by volume or something. I think so. Yeah. It, it's you know it's it's getting harder to get our hands on the, what we would even consider our staple whiskeys. So we do a lot more travel, and we have friends that bring stuff home to us as gifts, and we're still very thankful. <laughs> we need a prohibition period, so because you guys did pretty well out of that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Canadian. we're very resourceful and resilient when it comes to. Being told we can't have something, we'll we'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> so we've got quite a few guys jumping on, uh, saying hello. We've got. I just Graham saw Young. Tobias. Yeah, I saw Tobias. Yeah. Hi, Tobias. Yes, Tobias is on. Um, and we so we have we've got a question just talking about um, Canada and the whiskey you guys are getting. Uh, Ian Bruce is on YouTube and he's asking, does Joanne have some Canadian whiskey that she would recommend to try? Oh my gosh, there's so many great Canadian whiskeys now. Um, and I don't know how much you know uh, about how the Canadian category has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. But it, that's basically what happened is about 20 years ago, there was a gentleman who uh, who decided he wanted to make whiskey, but not like the what I call the big five we're doing. So just the Canadian blended whiskey. And so he sort of changed or he kind of turned the industry on its head. And as a result of that, it kind of opened up all the doors to the micro distilleries and the smaller distilleries that are actually making amazing single malts. And I don't like using the word amazing very, very often, but I've seen I've seen the change in the last 20 years of where we were to where we are now. And those whiskeys are top notch, like some of our single malts are absolutely phenomenal. Um, problem is not a lot of them are available outside of Canada. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the ones I do love to recommend is if you want to taste a really great, what I call 100% rye whiskey, spicy, uh, uh, gingery, 
with a nice peppery finish. Like I highly recommend Lot 40 because I know that that one's more and more available in uh, in Europe, in Germany, especially if for some bizarre reason, the Germans absolutely love it. And okay. um, the other one that I really, really enjoy, and I don't think it's available yet over there, um, but it's uh, it was a small distillery. It was one of the first micro distilleries and their product was called Stock and Barrel. I don't know if I have a bottle here. I must. I have like I have all kinds of whiskey up there somewhere. I don't see it right off the top of my head. I got too many whiskeys on that shelf. Uh, but it was um, it was two guys that just decided they were gonna quit their jobs in the big IT industry and they started this small little quiet distillery and really quickly gained notoriety of just a, a really great canadian whiskey like it was just it just blew up all by itself and and then of course word of mouth and then they started winning awards and uh really great great whiskey um hints of cloves like maple mm -hmm. syrup cloves uh super nice long finish i i used to call it my winter warmer gotta go walk the dogs when it's minus 40 degrees outside and still come home happy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so those are the two that like if if it's available anywhere but Canada, like you'll find those, you'll find those too. Like that to me would be the epitome of like Canadian whiskey, Canadian rye. And there's way more. I mean, there's way more out there. But like those are the two that I can think of right off the top of my head. Uh, and are people making it across the whole the whole country? You know, yeah, just, coast to yeah. coast. Yeah, uh, it's even made in our Northwest Territories, which is like way up north. Yeah, there's a, a wonderful. It's called Yukon. Yukon whiskey and, and it's uh, again single malt winning all kinds of crazy awards uh, not just in Canada but North America and around the world um, we have some in British Columbia Shelter Point I could name I could name distilleries in every province yeah Signal Hill Signal Hill out of Newfoundland what am I, I they're right in my backyard uh, I voted Signal Hill my 2019 uh, new find like like exciting new find um, value for money whiskey in Canada. Like okay. it was just, it was great. It's beautiful. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's quite often the case and we're quite guilty of that in, in Scotland, certainly in Aberdeenshire as well, of, of forgetting what's right in your doorstep. And, yeah. Uh, you, you look at it, what else is out there and you think, I don't know if you guys have this, we certainly have this kind of closed door or, or kind of, if it's on our doorstep, it can't be as good as something that's made somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a great one on our doorstep, the Glengarry. Um, which yeah. Is, uh, it often gets overlooked by ourselves um, more than more than people coming up to the area. Russell shaking his head. He he doesn't. Uh, I'm not fan. Quite, I'm not a fan. I, quite, yeah, I mean, I just always find it a wee bit harsh, but it's it's just not my my flavor palette. But which I, I feel really bad about because. You know, we work five miles away from the distillery. We sell lots of it. I'm, I'm more than happy to sell it. I love the story. I love the distillery. I love what it is. Um, but the, the, the founders in particular is just, just not on my palate at all. But I tell you, the so, 12's, the 12's an extra. It, it's funny you should say that because, I mean, I've, I've visited, of the 120-odd-plus distilleries that are in Scotland now, I've been going over since 2007, I think. So... Mm -hmm. I've, I've visited quite a few of the distilleries. I've been to Glengarry a couple of times and I'll, I'll be honest with Russell. I'm with Russell. I find um, some of their whiskey, they're hit or miss for me. It's like sometimes they're really, really great and I really enjoy them. And other times I'm like, eh, I'm not so crazy about this one, but I have to admit where I, where I've found my happy spot for Glengarry is the independent bottles, yeah. independent bottlings yeah. of Glengarry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We have a guy in Canada. His name is Igor Kosov. He's a, uh, he's Ukrainian by, by, uh, by birthright, but he's moved to, to Canada and he brings in all kinds of wonderful whiskeys under his company heads and tails. He has a Glen Gary every time we do a tasting together and he serves that one, like people, people literally their mouths like fall on the tables. When we say it's a Glen Gary, it is unrecognizable. It is the yeah. furthest thing from an official bottling, but it's just probably one of the most, I still say it's the unadulterated DNA of Glengarry. That's how I feel yeah. about his whiskey. It's just phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I had a lady of the Glen, lady of the Glen. Have you heard of yeah? So they are eleven-year-old oh. Glengarry. I mean, it looked like white yes. wine. It was so clear, and it was just yes. incredible. Yeah. Divine. Yeah. yeah. Delicate yeah. but divine. I've tried that one. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, Gregor's doing some fantastic single casks. Um, just now. It, it is quite, the, the lucky thing is that there's quite a lot of Glengarry out there as mm-hmm. a single cask or, or independent bottling. Um, all tend to be around about that 2008 kind of era. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but fantastic stuff. I, I like it. I, I, I'm probably with you guys in, in that the, for, for me, the Renaissance expressions um, mm-hmm. or the single cast stuff, it, it, even from the distillery, it, it, it's really, really good. Um, the, the, yeah, the core range. And, and I guess we sell a lot of it because we, we're on the doorstep and that's what people are looking for. And, and it's it's an easy sell. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's good whiskey as well. I think I, I, I have nothing against it. There's better, there's worse out there. Yep. But uh, certainly in the uh, when they step it up and over and above the core range, I think they really come through really, really well. They, I find they have a flavor profile that fits, um, I don't want to say a certain category of people, but it's like the people who love it, love it a lot. And that's what they're yeah. looking for is that particular flavor profile. Um, maybe it's because, I don't know about yourselves, but maybe it's because I've been drinking whiskey for so long. Like I find my my flavor profile has changed over the years. I used to go yeah. for, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, yeah. I started as a peat head. Yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. I despised Speyside whiskeys. I wasn't a fan too much of Highland whiskeys at the beginning. And that was in my 30s. And then gradually I kind of flipped to Sherry's. And now I'm on a bourbon, like an ex- yeah. ex-bourbon kick. Like I want everything to be ex-bourbon. And I, yeah. I'm I'm enjoying that flavor profile right now a lot yeah it's almost the opposite of the trend most people gonna get introduced to whiskey and that bourbon that kind of lighter kind of sweeter style get the sherry kick and then once they've had enough of that they need another kind of fix and this they go on to the peak whereas you've got to go the opposite way you can I I tend to be the opposite of a lot of trends (laughs) I'm okay with that I follow the same trend as yourself, Joanna. I mean, I, I, I drank peated whiskey initially because I thought I should, because I thought that was the proper Scottish thing to do, you know. And um, <laughs> I kind of I enjoyed it enough, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't in love with it. Um, and it wasn't until I, I picked up my first bottle of Glendronach, twelve-year-old, or a friend gifted it to me. Mm. That was my whoa. Wait a minute, this is. This is a different world here altogether. Sherry and bomb. Then, and then I got into the sherry bomb kind of stuff, and then, yeah. then I discovered the bourbon stuff like you as well. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute, the sherry bomb could be a little bit overpowering sometimes. But mm-hmm. the bourbon, it's it's all here. Everything is honest with a bourbon, a mature whiskey. Yeah. So, um, and, I, and I'm slowly going back into peat again. I'm, I'm picking mm-hmm. up kind of things slowly. I don't think I'll ever go into the really meaty stuff again. I, I can't see me going down that road. But hey. You never know. I don't think I would turn one down. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody gave me one, I wouldn't say I'm not going to drink that. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because I find, um, like, I've been writing about whiskey for a while now, and we, and you know, we'll we'll talk a lot about how the uh, it's it's a roller coaster, like every other spirit. You know, gin had its heyday, and then it fell out of favor, and then it, you know, gin's back up again, and. Bourbon had its heyday and then nobody was drinking bourbon and now everybody's ramping up and drinking bourbon again. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a lot of us that are saying like whiskey's on the cusp of like falling out of favor again, because the last time would have been the early 80s. So it's it's almost time like it's been 40, you know, 40 some odd years type of thing, almost 40 years, actually. And uh, so it's interesting to watch. And this is just a very broad statement for me, but it's like I've kept a spreadsheet because I'm sort of obsessive compulsive about that. Uh, I've said I've pretty much kept a spreadsheet for about the last 10 years of what I've purchased, where I've purchased it, how much it was. And in some cases, I've written down like my tasting notes just a little bit. Mm. And uh, the price tags are crazy right now in Canada, yeah. especially. Uh, the flavor profiles have changed quite a bit. And I'm finding myself, instead of going for the Glenfiddich 12 that's available on the regular market, um, I'm looking, I'm seeking out like what I call the Glenlivet or the, the Glenfiddich, the Glenlivet, whatever. I'm seeking them out from the 70s and 80s. So I'm looking for the young whiskeys from a previous generation because those were yeah. like, those were phenomenal. Yeah. And these ones are like, well, it's still Glenfiddich 12 but it's not the Glenfiddich 12 I used to drink type of thing. So yeah, yeah. there's there's and a lot of us that are headed in that direction. Yeah, you're still picking up these guys fairly reasonable, you know. 
RRP or less. You know, they're uh, pretty pretty good to get. And uh, we, we know uh, one of our, our friends, Gary Dunsour from the City uh, Whiskey Club, um, he always seeks out kind of these old school 1970s blends uh, yeah. to, to drink uh, and get some crack of prices. And, and I suppose that's what the auctions used to all be about, wasn't it? Finding a little bit of a bargain basement uh, uh, bottle. But nowadays it's all about reselling and, and getting the best price rather than the, the, the buyers getting getting a bargain. Yeah. It's very yeah. rare we'll find bargains. Um, the last one I found was was so epic. I, I It literally brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. Um, I'm not kidding. Like, I am very... I, I don't play poker with me. I have the worst poker face in the world. Um, I was in New Orleans for Tales of the Cocktail. So that would have been like 20, I want to say 2016, maybe 2015, 2016. And it was a crazy week of just like getting to meet people and drinking whiskey and drinking Pisco and trying all kinds of different spirits mm -hmm. and uh, wandered off. It's like 102 degrees Fahrenheit every morning at seven o'clock in the morning, wandered off. And I was just kind of like walking down the street, got lost, ended up in a little, what we would call a mom and pop convenience store. Didn't even know they had liquor, just kind of like wandered in because I needed something cold to drink and saw that they had a, 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 like a bookcase of whiskey bottles. And I thought, well, that's bizarre. Well, I'm going to go take a look. So I walked over and on the very bottom shelf with about two inches of dust were the old Highland Park 15s. And I mean, like from the 1990s or the early yeah. 2000s. And I think I had a backpack and I literally, it was like, no, can't, can't be. And kind of looked down and then went on my phone and it was just like, you know, quickly, like, that's what they are. And I looked down and there was four bottles and it was literally like just, and then everything into, walked up to the man and he, he just sort of looked at me like, okay. I was like, how much is this? And he looked at the bottle and he's like, oh, it doesn't have a price tag. And I thought, oh crap. So I waited a few minutes and he came back and he was like, oh, I don't know, 52? I went, sure, yeah. I tried not to look too happy, right? Just kind of like, 52, I have four of them. He's like, oh, really? You have four? I was like, yeah. He's like, I can give you a deal. I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I got them for like $48 US, oh. and I literally ran like and hit around a corner, and I was like in tears. I was like, I cannot believe I just – and I kept taking them out and looking at them like, they, it's, it's this can't be real. Like it was just yes. surreal, surreal, surreal. All four bottles are gone. I drank them all. Good. Brilliant. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what you should have done. Yeah, Every single one of them, pop them open. You got to try this. You got to try this. You, you see, it, it is hard to find bargains, and one or two of the the, the sort of supermarkets, the, the small supermarkets in the area here, the cost cutters, and that we go into, normally you pick up bargains in there, and I'm noticing even in them, it's not happening mm -hmm. nearly the same. It's all all the prices gone. It's quite ridiculous. Um, but you're saying you notice a trend and, and you feel the Scotch industry is on a bit of a cusp. It's a question we, we've been asking a lot of people because there's so many new distilleries and it, mm -hmm. it's almost like there's a growth going on and on and on. But you you certainly feel there's a, 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 a wee bit I, of a I think so. Yeah. yeah, especially after COVID, like I noticed here in North America, and I think it was kind of happening as well, like in Scotland and some of the other countries, but it was just like the brand ambassadors quickly disappeared. People were being furloughed yeah. or people were be given, like they were given, I'll, I'll call them early retirement packages. Uh, we went from, in Canada, we had, we probably had 20 plus brand ambassadors, global brand ambassadors. And uh, even post COVID, I think we're down to, I think we're still down to four. So right. You see, like, you know, the companies, I'm going to say, my personal opinion, I'm entitled to it, got wind of the fact that they were still going to sell whiskey with, with regardless of, you know, brand ambassadors jet setting around the world or different provinces or different countries. And mm. uh, it just seems to have ramped up one of the whiskey festivals that I was at, uh, you know, we're back. I've been sec sent for effective and tactical communications a, a few times. <laughs> so when I say this, I have to stop and think sometimes. We're back to what I call you're with, friends, you're with friends tonight. You can see me. We're, <laughs> we're nobody watches this, right? Right. Nobody uh, watches this. <laughs> we're back to what I call booth bunnies. Two booth bunnies. 
booth bunnies. That's what booth I used bunnies. to call them years ago, which okay. is people that know nothing about the product. They're just, you know, they, they're, they're standing in front of you with a bottle and you're like, yeah, could okay. I have some of that? And they're like, oh yes. And then they pour it. And then you say, can you tell me a little about it? Um, well, it's a, it's a scotch. Okay. <laughs> I think it was made in the United States. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. end of discussion. Like there's, there's no corporate knowledge. There's no. So I think we're like, we're going, I can see it going backwards all of a sudden. Like it's, there's going to be less sure. engagement, less, it's just, it's not a, it's just declining. I can see the decline. I keep saying it's I, I the guess, next nail in the coffin. I guess we have, uh, it's a global thing. Um, yeah. And that people are buying whiskey, maybe not to drink, but as investments. And I think that that's possibly like, a, obviously a contributory to that is, they, they just want to know what they can buy to make money off it. They mm -hmm. don't care what grapes oh, yeah. distilled or what kind of cask it is. They, they have an idea of what will give them money. So, and it, yeah, it's it's a big shame. And, and it's pushing the prices for guys like the Lady of the Glen, um, independent bottlers, and I want to pay premium price. And obviously, the, the consumer ends up having to, to pay that as well. And it's a shame that this, this other side, the dark side of the industry is is so directly affecting the guys who are drinking it and enjoying it and have done for 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. Um, it's the number one question I get asked actually. Yeah. What should I buy that's going to hold its value or that I'll be able to yeah. resell yeah. in a couple of years? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. That's the hard, yeah. the hard thing when someone because when this is I'm wanting to buy a new bottle of I finished my last one, I need something else to drink tonight. It's like yay, like magic. Brilliant. <laughs> people come in and say what we're gonna make money on you just go uh oh. just read Tobias's and yeah. <laughs> Tobias's there's a, there's a <laughs> worry for everyone. <laughs> Tobias and I met uh during Fage 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 Fage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Julie Hamilton still tries to correct the way I say it. Fage. Uh I'm gonna say in 20, 2014, I think was the first time we met. And I thought he was, excuse the language, bad shit crazy because he was sleeping in a tent on the side of the road. <laughs> but we became fast friends. We we both love whiskey. I haven't seen him since. So I'm just going to say a big hello. And I hope you're doing extremely well. And I hope to yeah. someday run into you, not on the side of the road in a tent, but, you know, somewhere <laughs> else in, in Scotland. A tent, a tent on the side of the road in uh, Iowa. on the side of the road. It's probably the most sensible place to stay because there's nowhere else. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I met Tobias also in Isla at the Isla uh, Whiskey Academy. Um, oh, nice. In 2019, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it was 19, 2019. So um, yeah. he, he, he said it was an actual campground on a beach. <laughs> So. <laughs> that's, that's what you were told, Tobias. Um, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure it's it's the the stand. <laughs> I, I love the, the booze bag. So our shop is almost in the center of of Inverurie, <laughs> and next door we have a shop. It's an electrical tele television shop, and it's called Booze. Oh so, no way! Yeah. Oh, that's so, I'm going to have to blow up that uh, screen, that beware of booth money and Funny. stick it under the door tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I love it. If you're watching, Trevor, um, I apologize in advance <laughs> for this. <laughs> You could just say no booth, no booth bunnies here. Go next door. <laughs> Go buy yourself a TV. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We, could, oh, we could do a do a. That we fake promo, go in and ask for the booth bunny and get 10% off your telly. Hey, I like it. I like it. So, sell some t shirts. Yeah. Booth yeah. bunny t shirts. on it. There we go. Smart man. And again, that one. <laughs> on the senior side of booth bunnies, we, we have them in Scotland as well. And um, I, th I think it's it's terrible that we have them here. Um, where, where we make so much of it and, and more often than not it's on our doorstep mm. um i'm a big believer in education especially for bar staff uh, we we run the whiskey ambassador course at, um and uh, uh, paul mclaughlin who we, we talked about before coming on is a uh, tutor of it as well um and just 
it really just gives them the basic knowledge and confidence to talk about, you know, what is whiskey. Um, yeah. you, you go to France or Italy or Spain, um, Australia, even ask them about the wine, and they know in depth. They know where the white vineyard is, what the grapes are, the vin- the, the bottles, and everything. And in Scotland, it's so often, unless it's a specialist whiskey bar or a high end hotel. But even then, sometimes they're, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a blend. It, you know, it's, well, it's a blended malt. Big difference. Like, oh, yeah. it's a blend. Or, or, or it's a, yeah, it's a malt, and they give you a grouse or some of that. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah, it is one of my bugbears. Um, but I'll, I'll get down off my soapbox and. But we'll, it, we'll, it, it is, it is a bit of a shame. I think it's a bit of a shame that there are because there are so many whiskey enthusiasts out there. Um, I went into I went into a bar. Um, it was a hotel in uh, Baddock Row on the west coast, and there's a fantastic little whiskey uh, snug. Um, it was myself and my brother-in-law, both huge whiskey fans. We've been fishing all day. Uh, we dropped the the thing for the boat off at the hotel, and they uh, just went and had a couple of drams. And uh, the, the the barman came through, and and he was actually reasonably knowledgeable. There was nothing wrong with his knowledge at all. But as soon as we started talking, you could just see him going, "Oh God." And I felt really bad for him because <laughs> he, he did know his stuff. We we knew more, you know. It was just yeah. that, and it was. Oh no, of, they're geeks. I'm just not going to say. I'm just not going to say this. I'm not going to correct him, or because he he really did know more than enough for people yeah. who didn't know an awful lot about whiskey. So sometimes that can happen as well, and um, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like if you hold a tasting and there's there's actually a whiskey maker. In, in the in in the in the audience, you're like, oh, that's not what you need at all. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have uh, one of the best, and I'm not saying that because I'm biased, but it's one of the oldest and best whiskey festivals in uh, in Canada. It's been running for 27 years, and we we have people that come over from Scotland, like Alan Winchester, which. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. you're sitting in a room with Alan Winchester and then it's your turn to stand up and present, you're just like, you, your, your knees knock and he's just sitting there smiling very nicely. And it's, uh, it's more than an experience. I mean, it is, it's a terrifying experience to have to get up, you know, in front of your, I want to call them your mentors or your, your stars. Yeah. We, we have a thing called whiskey bingo cards. And yeah. uh, when you get to meet your, you know, it's like, I, I got Alan Winchester. I got, you know, I got... <laughs> <laughs> Ian, I got Ian McCollum from, and, and it's, yeah. we're very geeky that way, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I think for me, I'd be happier if at least people that work in liquor establishments, um, at whatever level, even had a cheat sheet on how to pronounce things. Mm. Like there's nothing worse than, you know, what do you have behind the bar? And they say, well, we have an ocean to shashashashin. And you're like, a- <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call it that from now on, actually. <laughs> yeah. And ocean to yeah. Uh, uh, is that even a whiskey? That must be new. I've never heard of that one before. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, my, my ex-father-in-law, God love him. He's, he's, uh, he's still alive and kicking and he loves his Ardbergs. So it's, you know, it's like you're adding letters, you're forgetting pronouns, you're, it's like, I, I have no idea what you're asking me to try at this point, because I don't even understand what you're saying. And uh, I feel bad, because then you end up being that person, right? It's like, oh, no, honey, it's Auchentoshin, right? And, and you end up sounding yeah. like the crazy yeah. grade two teacher with the red pen, like it's, yeah. I feel bad. But at the same time, I'm like, I'd rather you learn how to say it right for me and then the next time you actually sound educated and you know what you're talking about and you have the ability to talk a little bit more about the product or where it's from. or So I just see it as a, an educational there's, there's experience. Something, there's, there's sometimes a lot of a balance for that, and especially if you're talking to a, a customer who's looking for a bottle mm-hmm. and they, they continue and persist in pronouncing it wrong. I, I always try and correct them a couple of times, but after that, I'm like, I can't do that again because I'm going to sound like a conceited idiot now if I keep on doing it. Exactly. But the, but the worst one, and the one that has absolutely drives me nuts, is when people talk about the Singleton Distillery. Oh. And I'm like, there is no Singleton Distillery. They're like, yeah, the one in Muir of Ord. I'm like, well, that's Glen Ord. Yeah, well, the Singleton Distillery. I said, but it's not a Singleton Distillery. But the, pro- the problem is they've branded everything on the bloody distillery. Yeah. The there. So, so you can see why people say that. Yeah. Like, I think they into the kind of, oh, well, they've got Glen Dullin and they've got Dufton and and they, they just glaze over. They're not listening. Go, yeah, the Singleton Distillery. And I just thought, okay, I'm just going to have to. But that really, really, really gets my goat. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to say my biggest bugbear, um, and it's probably the most famous whiskey, um, but it's the McCallum. Oh, the McCallum. 
<laughs> I love the McCallums. Oh, they're delicious. Totally <laughs> that. Well, if that's only drinks, that, that, that's maybe how he pronounces it after he's had a bottle. But uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, bugbears. Um, yeah, that, that's my one. <laughs> but yeah, and, and again, the guys tell us about you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Tobias, uh, Ian, James, uh, the rest of you guys watching at home, what, what's your bugbear when it comes to whiskey pronunciations? Um, I'll throw another one in there. Tom and Tool is another Tom one. Tool. <laughs> but, um, you you tell Aberlour. 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 They say Aberlour a lot here. <laughs> and like it's, it's like flour, yeah. rhymes with flour. Aberlour. I, 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 I tell Mike's, so Mike, Mike's got a story about Tom and Towel that I that I now tell in every tasting I'm on when I've got a Tom and Towel on it. I, I, I pass on Mike's story. I'll let him tell yeah. it. We, um, so so we're, we're about an hour away from Speyside. So um, before we got an account direct with the Angus Dundee distillers, we went up to the distillery and we bought the stock. Um, so I was sitting in there, their office, just chatting away, having a cup of coffee, waiting for the stock to be to be kind of run through and uh, I made the mistake of saying Tom and Tool and um, I don't often do it I, I don't know why this kind of came out in conversation Tom and Tool and I got this tap on the shoulder and I turned around and there's this bear of a man standing behind me and he goes hi laddie it's it's Tom and Tool and he goes oh right yeah sorry yeah I, I meant to say Tom and he goes I'll tell you a story and you won't forget you'll never pronounce it wrong again I was right okay and he sat down and he goes my name's Tom, or he said Tam, because my name's Tam. And he goes, the first thing I do in the morning is go into the shower. When I come out of the shower, I grab a towel and wrap myself in it for the day. And he just looks at me and he goes, so that's me. I'm a Tom in a towel. So and I just had this image of this big hairy beast oh, no. of a man. Sitting out of the and I was like, oh, it's ingrained in me. So I'm never mispronouncing Tom and towel again. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to drink that whiskey now that you've put that visual <laughs> image in my mind. Like big hairy <laughs> man in a towel. <laughs> well, I guess in a serious sense of that, um, it's great to laugh at and have a joke, but if people like us don't go in a bar and, and let's say people like us, people who know, uh, and I'm very keen for the guys in the shop to to um, help educate um the pe or, 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 and also learn from customers because there's always going to be somebody out there who knows more than you. Um, I don't like blagging. I don't like trying to wing things. If you don't know, you don't know. And if the person is willing to tell you, learn from them, even as a customer. Um, you know, a lot of customers know a lot more about whiskey than we do. Um, so it's great. And they just open up to them and say, oh, I didn't know that. Can you tell me more? You learn it. And then what you've learned, tell us and we can learn. Um, so I, I think it's a great thing that there are people, real enthusiasts, who go into bars and, and are willing to share with the bar staff. If they see somebody who's not that confident or pronounces it wrong, I actually tells them, as long as they do it in the non patronizing kind of way. It's a way of doing it. It's, way. Way. it's going to be stupid. It's not Glenn Morangi. It's Glenn Morangi or the other way around. Uh, you know, it's um, there's a way of saying it. but yeah. Glenn uh, Morangi. Yeah, because they all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's. Um, uh, Tobias said Glengarry was a surprise Glen hearing Giri. it in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Glengarry Oc is the. Uh, <laughs> Glengarry Oc. Glengarry Oc. Yeah. Well, we have uh, so many people in Scotland who still get that one wrong as well. So it's not a, that's not a national yeah. one. Glengarry for me is absolute proof that whoever invented the Gaelic language was either drunk or dyslexic, but probably both. Yes, on both, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, if I'm right in saying so, like some of my ancestors are from Scotland, but they're from the West Coast. Uh, okay. So I was brought up to say Kalila. Mm -hmm. But I've heard other people, especially Glaswegians for some odd reason, no offense if you're Glaswegian, uh, they say cool, Kulila. Coolila. I've heard Coolila as well. Yeah, uh, so there's like all kinds of different, you know, pronunciations yeah. as far as I mean, even the way I say pronunciation is different than the way you say pronoun <laughs> pronunciation. Pronun pronun pronunciation. Yeah, no, we're saying, pronunciation. Pronunciation. Yeah. 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 English is not my first language. It doesn't matter. I just say whatever. <laughs> so we're 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 both northeasters. I mean, I'm I'm originally from the Highlands. I was born in Inverness and 
but I spent most of my life in Aberdeenshire and Mike's born and bred Aberdeenshire. So we uh we, we can we can kind of try and speak kind of normal English, but a lot of the time mm. we're pretty much Chukter. Do you speak Doric? Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, feed in. Good like, oh, 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 you've been doing a fair day. Oh, oh. I love Doric. 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 I I can just imagine the uh, the subtitles having an absolute collapse. <laughs> yeah. <on this>. Yeah. <laughs> no idea what you just said whatsoever. It just, it just went question mark, question mark, question mark, something, something. Don't know what he just said. <laughs> it's good. That when it comes up to stars, incoherent. <laughs> incoherent. Um, I, I've gone to Scotland. Sometimes I'm there three, even four weeks. Like I'm seriously immersing myself when I get up there and I don't just drink whiskey. Me, I do other things as well. Cause yeah. God forbid my mother should think I'm actually an alcoholic <laughs> and I'm just wandering from distillery to distillery. But, uh, I have to admit that, uh, it's a language. I think it has, there's something in my DNA that I just, I love the language. I love the people. It's so raw and it's just so beautiful. And when I come home, I have I, I, I drive on the wrong side of the road when I come home, which is terrible. And uh, I also have a hard time understanding English for the first couple of days because I'm just so immersed in uh, in the Scottish way. Like when I come home, and I I I hate leaving Scotland. I keep saying that if a man, if any man, I'm going to put this out there for the next time I'm there. Uh, if any man just asks me to marry him, I will stay. I guarantee it. I can cook and I drink whiskey. You don't you know anything else. I just want to live the less the rest of my life in Scotland. There's an alternative proposal, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So when are you back over? When, when's your next trip? Um, it could be as early as April. Uh, there's a, there's an opportunity on the table to maybe I, I, I'll know next week, my fingers are crossed. It could be as, as, as early as the end of April. Uh, there's awesome. a brand new young distillery that's, uh, getting ready, I think to kind of like present their wares, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm not at liberty to tell you who at this point, but so that might be an opportunity for me to to come over and and if I do get invited over then I'm obviously going to do it more than just a couple of days I'm just going to sure. okay. we say go hog wild I'm probably going to end up like telling my boss I'm leaving for 2 weeks <laughs> just sort of well I I know over. what our next ballot is going to be so for you coming over we can have people enter the ballot to to marry you oh yeah. yay <laughs> I got <mean>, that <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's great i've never been auctioned off before i love it let's do it <laughs> this is taking a dark down here you? <laughs> come to a blether we'll find you a wife yes let's do it. Oh, boy. absolutely absolutely oh, hey well, we're all friends here we, we like to share normally it's whiskey but we will, we will yeah, share friends <laughs> You, you say you've got an affinity to Scotland. I mean, I mean, there's there's always been a connection between uh, Scotland and Canada. I mean, it, there's been a, there was a lot of immigration in the '60s uh, from yeah. Scotland to Canada. Most of my family, well, not most, a, a fair proportion of my family, moved over to Canada in the '60s. Most have kind of come back. I've still got a lot of relatives in Canada, um, and I was able to go over when I was uh, ten, mm -hmm. way back in the mid '70s, over to Ontario and spent. Uh, I think we were there about a month. Uh, great times. Absolutely loved it can't wait to go back um but i, I always say our our, uh, our kind of uh, non um criminal relatives are all in canada <laughs> our criminal, our criminal relatives are all in, are all in australia mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're speaking my language you're speaking my language <laughs> so we like to yeah. stay in touch with our canadian family but maybe not so much with our australian ones but <laughs> no offense to any australians yeah. Yeah. None, none taken none taken uh, all I can tell you is my ancestors were forced to leave Scotland, not by choice, and uh, <laughs> they made their way to the East Coast, which is which is wonderful. And I don't know how familiar you are with where Dr. Paul lives. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Uh, he he lives in Yarmouth, which is at the other end of where I'm actually going to talk about. But there's a, a lovely. They consider themselves an island, but there's like an a, an Ismith or a bridge that holds. It's like an island, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cape Breton. And uh, I believe they have a larger population of people that actually speak Gaelic, 
uh, than really? that you guys do at this point. They actually I would, have. A, I, would, I would believe that it's true. Yeah, yeah. They have a, uh, like they have a Gaelic college, and people go there to learn and uh, sure. do everything, like everything in a in a Gaelic way. And when you go there, it kind of reminds me of Isle of Arran. Like it's got a little yeah. bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, it's got a Highland area. It's got like it's got rolling hills. It's got it's got everything. It's it's a beautiful part of the world, and the people are musical and friendly and a little bit batshit crazy which is how you know they're descendants of scotland i'm yeah, sorry absolutely. but that's you know and mm -hmm. uh yeah it's like having a little piece of scotland in our backyard so i love it fantastic yeah we, we've, actually managed, we've, we've managed to get all this way into the chat with the with managing to auction off um your, your, your the whiskey marriage. lassie <laughs> we've done all that. We've not, we've not we've not even asked how you got started in the whiskey. <laughs> oh, I suppose. Oh, okay. This is not the uh, question for only about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing. I'm just before we go, I'm laughing at some the guys on YouTube are loving this uh, ballot idea. By the way. Oh, <laughs> great. Asking how many uh, lottery points are there? Can can be we have the start of the first dance? Um, is there ticket prices? Um, Ian Bruce has come up with a name for the raffle, a blonde in a bottle. A blonde? A blonde. Yeah. It's it's going particularly Glasgow. It doesn't matter what color of hair you are, you're, you're, you're a blonde. blonde. Okay, you're got blonde. it. Blonde. Uh, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um geez, I'm told I'm I'm like disembobulated now. Thank thank you, gentlemen. Kindly keep drinking, <laughs> keep keep entering the auction. Thank you very much. All money will go to the Inverary uh Pets Association Fund or uh, whatever. Uh, I don't anyways. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm all disembobulated now. So let me let me let me start from the let me start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, what got me into whiskey? I, I'm gonna blame teenage stupidity uh, for starters. Um, the first whiskey I would have tried was in the back hall of a high school dance. My mother hates when I tell that story. Uh, and then I kind of stayed away from it for a little while, did the whole, you know, growing up, had children, started drinking because of toddlers. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. and uh, I've always had a really good nose and a really good palate, uh, mostly because of my upbringing. And uh, I started with wine, I would say, really, like really, really like nosing in palate was was wine. I could tell you like you could put a, a bottle in a bag and I could tell you what where what country it was from what grape it was uh right down to some cases right down to the year like i was just i was bang on um and then in my 30s i uh i went through a midlife crisis uh divorced one husband stayed a single for a little while to, to pay attention everybody that's auctioning okay this is important yeah, it's, a, it's a good box out here guys we need yeah, to do this. yeah yeah just so y'all understand what you're getting yourself Ooh. into and uh, met this wonderful man and uh, was being introduced to his parents once we had dated for a little while. And when I showed up at the door, the first thing my future father-in-law said was, uh, you drink whiskey? And I went, oh, yeah, I've drank, I've, I've drank, you know, like Canadian whiskey and Jack Daniels and some bourbons. And he went, I'll be right back. And he went downstairs and he poured something and he put it in front of me and I brought it up to my nose and it smelled like burnt tires that had been dipped in iodine and uh, I, can't, I don't even, it was just like, I can't drink that. Like it was literally, he just, he started to laugh and uh, he's like, no, no, just, you know, taste it. I went, okay. So took a good swig of it, barely survived, couldn't breathe, you know, the whole nine yards. He had a good chuckle. And I went, I don't know what this is, but it's fire water. I can't drink this. And he just said, no, just, 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 Take, take some time, you know, just relax with it. Take about an hour to actually sip at it. Well, by the end of the hour, I was convinced that this was the most heavenly lights from oh, heaven came down, shone oh, upon the glass. And uh, so my very first scotch was an Archbank 17. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yes. And I quickly became part of the family because I could actually drink Archbank 17. Uh, so that's how it all started, like as far as tasting whiskeys, you know, understanding, and I have a chemistry background, so I really understood distillery. I was really good at organic chemistry. Um, I have this innate ability that when I hold up a whiskey, it, it's rapid fire thoughts or rapid fire images. So 
it's not uncommon for me to be sitting, especially back then when there really wasn't that many women attending festivals, you know, to yeah, just be yeah, the yeah. first one to kind of like, I smell a new band aid or I smell an inner tube tire or I smell and everybody would just kind of like turn around and look at me like, what the hell? Right. So yeah. um, I, I just, it just evolved from there. And then um, I attended a, a whiskey tasting at the, at a St. Andrews society. And I don't know if you guys have St. Andrews societies in Scotland, but in St. John, New Brunswick, we have a St. Andrews society. And uh, after the tasting, I, I said, I would really love to join this club. And they said, we're sorry, you can't because you're a woman. Oh. And I was blown away because we're not talking 1957. We're not even yeah. talking 2005. We were talking uh, 2010. And I really was disappointed, but I thought, well, okay, that's, that's your prerogative. You guys are guys, you do your guy thing. And uh, that set the wheels in motion to, oh, to start my own tasting society in the city yeah. of St. John. And uh, within a few years, we had, uh, we were 50 members proud, almost half were women. And it, it uh, just ballooned from there. I, I started a blog, Whiskey Lassie, uh, and then it got really serious. I started to do presentations and I started to travel and I started to uh, appear. I've appeared at the Speyside Whiskey Festival. I've appeared at uh, Toronto, Toronto Live. I've appeared in Victoria. Um, I've been to distilleries in other countries. Uh, and it just became an obsession, I think, more than anything else to just yeah. learn more, drink more, write more. Um, I've been a creative writer for as far back as I can remember. So as you noted in, in your email to me, like I write from the heart and I write I write about the journey versus mm. I'm not interested in, you know, what we're tasting in the glass. I'm much more interested about creating the experience that yeah. led to us sitting together and, and drinking the whiskey. So I have a very specific style of writing that a lot of people seem to enjoy. And yeah. uh, 40 years later, I still love it. I am very passionate and uh, borderline obsessive compulsive about it still. So it's it's a fit. But, that, but that's it. where you have to be. And, and it's a storytelling that actually that, that makes the whole thing. I mean, you, you coined the phrase the whiskey fabric. Whiskey fabric. It pulls everything together. And it, 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 it's just exactly that. That's that's what whiskey's about. It's not what, what I love about it is the fact that when you sit down with anybody to drink a whiskey, or even if you're sitting down with yourself and you've got a book, you've no idea what direction your thought process is actually going to go or the conversation is going to go. Because there's so many different avenues you can go down with with whiskey, it's just fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> yep, I love it. It uh, it's a it's a, a story starter. It's better than talking about the weather. It's oh God, uh, yeah. a stepping stone <laughs> to making lifelong friendships. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been, I've been in in this in this part of I, I don't want to call it the industry, but this part of the whiskey fabric long enough that I've I've unfortunately lost some of my favorite mentors or some of my best friends uh, along the way. And, you know, all of a sudden it's like, like I said, that picture of me that you guys had, it's like 10 years ago and I, I'm a beautiful brunette, but all of a sudden I'm like, Oh my God, I'm one of the elders now. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is great. So I'm, I'm ushering in the next generation of whiskey drinkers and it's a, a phenomenal journey and I really, really like it. So, I think that, that photo was of you standing in front of the Ocean Toshishin. Ocean Toshishin. Ocean Toshishin in New York City. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty phenomenal. And, and you kind of touched on that kind of anti female side of the, the argument. Have you seen, you, you must have seen big strides in that since. Um, and I, I don't think the industry itself ever had an issue with it. it for me, it's always going to be more of a consumer issue rather than an industry issue. Yeah. Have you felt that yourself trying to break down that barrier? Is it, you've been welcomed in with open arms by the industry itself? Uh, I, I've seen a change. I mean, the first time I appeared at the Speyside Whiskey Festival, uh, I was with my partner and he and I jumped in the back of a taxi and we, you know, the taxi driver said, well, where are you guys headed? And and my husband answered like, oh, we're going to, uh, I don't remember what the name of the class was, but we're going to this particular class. And he immediately said to my spouse, like, oh, are you one of the presenters? And I went, no, actually I am. And I, he almost drove us off the road, right? He was just like, <laughs> what? Like, you know, and it was like, Rrr! and uh, that would have been in 2012-ish. Yeah, so yeah, ten, yeah. 10 years, it's taken 10 years to uh, 
to kind of like change the culture, change the the way people look at uh, at who's drinking whiskey. Um, I think what I really enjoy, not to poo poo on the gentlemen that are older than myself, but I think they're from a certain generation. I I tend to call them the whiskey dinosaurs. Again, mm -hmm. not effective or tactful, but at this point, I really don't care. Who cares? Uh, yeah. No. So I find men of, of um, the next generation, the 40s and below, like the people that are coming, they have no issues with me standing at the front of the class. I'm not mansplained. And if you don't know what that is, I'd be more than happy to explain it to you. Uh, Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I've been very fortunate that I've, I've, um, I've, never, I've never had – in the last five years, I've not had, I've had zero issues uh, in North America. Uh, yeah. I, I know it's slightly different in some European countries. I'm in touch oh, with yeah. a lot of uh, female whiskey drinkers for some bizarre reason. Denmark refuses to believe that women drink whiskey for some bizarre reason. I don't know why. Uh, I can tell you that the demographics mm -hmm. in North America is like 40%. We're, we're up to 40%. 40% of, of whiskey drinkers are female. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what pisses me off is the whiskey industry and marketing has not clued into the fact that women that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s have money in their pockets mm, to yeah. spend. Yeah. And so they're aiming, and this is just my perspective, they're aiming for the 20-somethings that yeah, like the fruity drinks yeah. that don't have any money in their pockets when they could be doing their marketing to our demographic because we've yeah. got the money to spend we're educated we're smart we know yeah. what we like we know our whiskeys now there are a couple of companies that are starting to really hit like wonderful marketing mm -hmm. um glenlivet glenlivet is phenomenal mm -hmm. uh they've really hit the hit the hit the nail like right on the head a couple of times with some of their their marketing and some of their advertising mm -hmm. um and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we actually, I say we, it was as a result of, and that's what I love the most about it, two, two young male whiskey drinkers were watching a basketball game online in Canada and a very, very derogatory um, advertising came up for a whiskey company. And I just happened to be on Twitter doing something else. I wasn't watching the baseball game or the basketball game. But all of a sudden I saw these comments about like, oh, my God, did you guys just see that advertising for, you know, doers? Yeah, that's and, what the doers are. Yeah. 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 So I was like, what's going on? And it was two guys. Like it wasn't woman led. It was two men. Mm -hmm. That's where I think the culture change is happening. That's what I love about it. Uh, and sure enough, I clicked on the ad and I immediately went, oh, hell no. Like, yeah. oh, hell no. Yeah. Oh, hell no. And that like that started the campaign to take it down. Um, and I think that was maybe the the kick in the teeth that some of the industry may have needed to understand that like it's not a man's world anymore. It's not a man's drink. It's a person's drink. We we don't, you know, it, it shouldn't be I'm a female whiskey drinker, put it in a pink bottle. It's uh we're we're all whiskey drinkers. That's it. Yeah. End of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, that's it. More of a more of a marketing issue, though. I mean, it, it's interesting to see <laughs> you think Glen Liver are doing really, really well. I mean, I, I I really wasn't sure about the the the, the pods that they came out. Oh, um, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one was. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a festival thing, wasn't it? It was just a one-off for for a particular festival. That, oh God, it was just terrible. Like but the. But the, the, a lot of the advertising for like my, my generation, I'm I'm definitely the over fifty brigade, uh, the over forty, not even over forty, I'm over fifty. So, um, but it, a lot of the marketing is still led for the, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not even me because I don't have the money that they're looking at. It's the old boy brigade that wear tweeds and drive Aston Martins and, you know, blah uh -huh. blah blah. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's excluding not only women, it's excluding almost everybody entire, else. The rich, there you go. The rich there elite, the rich yeah. elite, and it's a rich elite men, and and the other angle that they're going for is are, are, the, are the kind of kids mm -hmm. and, and and this big huge gap in the middle in between exactly which, which, is, which is us which is all of us that we all know and speak to and get on with and love going to the pub with because we just chat about stuff mm -hmm. and we end up talking about copper and oak and you know all sorts of things we just we just geek out of it they're, they're completely missing that that group of people in the middle yeah those people better be listening to this like youtube <laughs> <laughs> <Send it> to <laughs> 
Yeah, it is good. guys that got to go to the festivals and, and that kind of thing and engage um, rather than the, oh. you, you'll never see these guys spending tens of thousands of pounds on the, the bottles because chances are they're not even drinking the things. They're, they're buying it and it's going on a shelf. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that last five minutes were ranty, weren't they? That's- <laughs> we're allowed. We're allowed to do yeah, a slight rant. Good. We're allowed. We had two drums. We had the four. We had four. They were proper ranting. Yeah. Um, you guys have two? Oh, okay. There's a Scottish thing that came from, I don't know, do you, are you aware of Rab C. Nesbitt? Yes. Yeah, so, you, uh, and I'll tell you another thing. Right, so that, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> That's when we know we're properly ranted. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to jump back an hour um, to where this question came up. Uh, okay. And I've just been looking to try and shoehorn it in, but as you say, the conversation has just been going ever. Um, so James has, has asked, by the way, yeah. uh, Joanne, what do you look for if you decide to buy something new? And I get, you know, I, I think he's talking about whiskey. I hope so, because I don't really buy anything else. Uh, again, this is where I buck the trend. I don't, I don't know the first thing between a, a Michael Kaur and a Louis Vuitton purse, or uh, I'm not a traditional don't put me in a box of a bunch of girls because I have no clue. I had a friend come over and do my makeup before this. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let me talk about whiskey. Um, what do I look for in something new? Hmm. That, you know what? I have never been asked that question before. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been asked all kinds of weird questions. Number one question is, what's, what's your favorite whiskey? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. My answer is always the last one that was in my glass. Yeah. Uh, What's your, what's your uh, desert island whiskey? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know the label. The label got washed off, so I just drink whatever was in the bottle. Uh, so I'm a very, uh, geez, that's a really good question. Let me let me take a look around and see which like which one was the last one I actually. Okay, new whiskeys. Well, uh. I'm a try before you buy kind of girl. I really don't like buying something if I don't know about it. And uh, because it's so subjective, I would never, unless I know the other person's opinion and I kind of feel like they are in the same flavor profile as I am, uh, I, I, tend to, I tend to try before I buy. So if, if somebody's pouring a sample, I'll try it. Um, I go to mostly whiskey festivals, to be quite honest. I think that's where I do the, my, my best work, my best research. Yeah. Uh, and if I like it, I'll buy it. And if I don't like it, then I try to figure out why I don't like it and how I could at least, you know, tell other people about it or whatever. I, I have a tendency to ask a lot of questions, maybe. I have a tendency to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do I look for when I'm buying? I guess my parameters would be, uh, uh, what am I getting for my money? What am I getting for my money? So if I'm in a liquor store and I'm looking around real quickly and I see something and be like, okay, it's cast strength. It's $170 a bottle. It's one of seven, like one of 126. I might consider buying that like just because of what it is or, or which mm-hmm. distillery it's from, or if it's a brand I understand and know very well. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm really a, a, I'm a unicorn in itself. I just kind of like, I like trying stuff. Samples, a lot of samples. Would, would you ever, I mean, uh, I, I suppose I'm probably slightly different in that I I tend to have an idea of the distillery that I want to find out more about and try because I follow it for a long time. And then I, I kind of get into it. So I start, I start reading flavor profiles. I start reading what other people have thought about it. I don't read reviews as such, um, but I'll, I'll start to discover a little bit about what flavor profile that maybe so so Tor Moore is, is a distillery oh, right now yeah. I'm hugely excited about it in every single sense I love the elixir in there I, I love Ollie, I love Georgia um, I, I love the I love the whiskey anyway and I'm so excited about the visitor centre I love what it is so that's definitely something I'm going to want to try because it's excited me for a long time and it's become more and more of a journey so when those bottles start to appear on shelves mm. that's definitely so that, that tends to be the way I go with something new, I, I, and, I, and I wouldn't necessarily want to try it first. I'd be more than happy to grab a bottle, provided it was within my price range. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd happily buy the bottle and then try it on spec. Um, 
And, and nine times out of ten, I've found that that's actually worked okay. But the only experience for me that didn't work okay was a Japanese whiskey. Mm. And, and the only reason that didn't work was because it was a bloody screw top. And straight away, yeah. that's not right. That's not right. Yeah. I told myself yeah. it was rubbish. Um, it, it turned out to be not a bad whiskey. I've still got a little drop through the house. I nosed it today to see. I was, I was going to try drinking it tonight. But it actually smells awful. Oh. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a proper analysis, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't excite me at all. But people love Japanese whiskey. You know? Yeah. I I think with reviews especially, and, and of course, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna mention uh certain people that make a grand stance on what the whiskey of the world well, indeed, is yes, whatever. Absolutely. No, but not uh, no, I uh I I I guess I just sort of rely on my own, you know, like my own my own my own process which is again bizarre because i'm i'm a bit of a unicorn i tend to i tend to i'm very diverse like i like everything is the problem maybe that's the problem i mean there's not just whiskey back there there's a whole shelf of gin there's a whole shelf of rum surely that's there's, not a problem you've, you've got to love cognac you've got to love brandy you've got to love calvados yeah I mean, yeah everything. and then if i were to turn my laptop you would see that there's actually three full walls like in this room <laughs> of all kinds of other stuff. I'll tell you what we do in Guys, Canada. Guys, get your ballot tickets in. For goodness sake, there's three. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's three <laughs> walls of spirit in there. That's right. This, she can this, cook this and keeper. she has whiskey. This one's a keeper, guys. Come on. Get it. Just part, send a part picture of, the, of your uh, boat. Yeah, part of the conditions of the ballot is that you have a room that you can dedicate to Duran's whiskey. Yes. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, in Canada, yeah. we do we do sample trades quite a bit. So it's yeah. like we'll be on yeah. a forum or we'll be chit chatting or we'll be on a Zoom call, and all of a sudden, like somebody will pull out a bottle and somebody else will go, "Oh my God, what is that?" And it's like, "Have you tried that? You haven't? I'll send you a sample, right?" So all of a sudden, it becomes this like, again, you get to try before you buy. So it's like, "Well, what did you think about it?" Well, I kind of liked it. It's okay, and you're like, "Oh yeah, send yeah. it over." Oh my God, I loved yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, samples help if you can get them. Yep. And well, again, visit. that's where we're very fortunate. I find like we're we're very well connected. We have a good network here in Canada where it doesn't matter where you are. If somebody's online and you just say, I'm looking for this. Like, one, one of the things that Mike and I often do, if we see a bottle on the shelf that we like the look of, but it's a little bit out of budget, we'll just we'll go halves. Oh, and yeah. We'll, and we'll split the bottle. And that, that really works as well. Yeah. Well, my future husband and I can do that if, uh, you know, God willing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jason Whiskey, who's on YouTube, did ask. Uh, he said, sounds like we were getting half a whiskey collection as a minimum. It's my dowry. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to bring the other, the other half to the equation, though, guys. You can't yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Canadian whiskey. I'm sure somebody would enjoy that very much, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Canadian whiskey is just not something I'm too familiar with at all. Um, you know, know. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Canadian Club and Crown, Crown Royal is uh, kind of. Um, the, Paul's mentioned a few. I think Paul mentioned the Lot Forty One before to us as well, and said, "Watch out for these guys." Um, yeah, Lot Forty is uh, delicious. JP Weiser's um, uh, Gibson's. I can't get it anymore, but Gibson's eighteen was a staple. Uh, Canada is the only place, as far as I can tell, where you can buy like an eighteen-year-old whiskey that for like $35, <laughs> like it's just ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So our prices are still fairly like, you know, it's easy. It's, it's not that it's easy to get. It's just like they're because they're not recognized. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Like I think, I think uh, the Canadian category is starting to ramp up quite a bit. So I think mm -hmm. some of the whiskeys, like I say, I can't get Gibson's 18 anymore because it's just too popular. That. Right. Yeah. I read the story about the Gibsons on, a, on another interview that a few years ago. You gave it with somebody, I can't remember who it was, and, and that was what well, that was obviously one of your first whiskeys that you managed to well. you managed to acquire uh, for the school disco, and yes. and but and you enjoyed it. Now, I, when I read that, I thought, wow, that is completely different to my school disco experience. Where, as a, as a Scottish kid, what you had to do because your dad knew exactly what was in each bottle mm -hmm. so you couldn't take a slug of scotch you had to take a little bit of scotch a little bit of bacardi a little bit of rum a little bit of vodka yeah exactly so that most i mean i don't know guys put your hands up feel exactly the same as me most most young scottish kids of my generation that was your experience of the the school disco drink was an amalgamation of what you could pinch out the cupboard without it being noticed yeah um, so when i read your story that 
this was a drink you really enjoyed. I thought, wow, that must have been amazing because what I stole was absolutely awful and, and, and tended, tended to make you very sick and very drunk as well. So, yeah. We would call that swamp water. Yeah, that's pretty much what mm -hmm. <laughs> Swamp yeah. water. Yeah. yeah, Gibson's 12. That's the first one I got to try because that's what my dad uh, would drink. And uh, yeah, I got I got into a lot of trouble because same as your father, he marked bottles. <laughs> I did not know that at the time. And uh, probably why I didn't drink whiskey for a long time after that, because uh, I don't think I sat for a couple of weeks. So. But I'm from that generation, you know, where... Yes, indeed. Absolutely. You didn't could do come after arm. a child with a wooden spoon and nobody would say anything. And... <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. They, they knew you deserved it, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I really shouldn't have stolen the whiskey. And it's like I say, my mother, uh, thankfully, my mother doesn't know anything about social media because the amount of times I have told that story, she would be <laughs> she'd be so embarrassed. She would never leave the house again. Like, she's, oh my God, my daughter's telling that story again. Like, bad it's a good story because it, it, it shows the full circle that we, as drinkers, go on, you know, as part of a let's drink to get drunk and then you actually, well, actually, no, there's something more here. Uh, I'd rather sip and savor, I'd rather enjoy it than, than repeat that experience. Yeah, so. Absolutely, you, you experience that horrible drunk feeling and say, I don't want to, I don't want to do this and, and I want to taste something that's nice. I like the feeling yeah. of being a little bit boozy, but I don't want to be so well, I don't know where I am and things. Yeah, and forget that great whiskey that you've tried. That, that's often the, the danger, isn't it? You try some wonderful whiskeys and then in the morning you're like, oh, I wish I had a, drank the, the bottle yeah. of gut rot afterwards yeah. because I can't remember the great experience where you, you feel ill because of it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another place where I'm slightly different. Like when I do a master class, like I, I, uh, again, I think this is very old school. It's like, if you went to, I'm not going to use any brand, but you know, you, you see their core and it's like the 12, the 15, the, the 20, the 25, the 30 at the, at the tasting. And you look down at the tasting mat and it's like, all right, we're going to, by the time we get to the 30, we're not going to be able to taste anything. Yeah. And so when I started doing my master classes, it was like, you know what? We're going to do the 12 as a, what I call the palate cleanser, the death mm -hmm. chair. Uh, but then we're going straight to the 30 and then we're drinking the yeah. 25 and then we're working our way, you know, back down yeah, to, yeah. to the yeah. Glenfiddich 15 or whatever. And uh, mm -hmm. I've developed a reputation. I, I would like to think, I mean, I get a lot of feedback about my classes, but I do all my, all my tastings blind. So nobody knows what we're drinking. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I do them like a roller coaster. So I might start with a peated and then, you know, talk for a few minutes, everybody drinks some water. Yeah. And then okay, now we're going to the next whiskey and it's, it's the 12 year old. And then we're going back up to the 25 and then we're, mm -hmm. and then at the end I do the relief, uh, the, the, the relief, no, not the relief. The, <laughs> the deal, the deal. I'm just going to stop deal. drinking whiskey now. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, I tell everybody what we're drinking. There we go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The and it's always a surprise. The reveal. The reveal. the reveal. Yes, <laughs> not the relief. The reveal. I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> You I am yourself. never being invited to this YouTube again, am I? I just know. Oh my God. I think it's fantastic. It's a reveal at your whiskey taste, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we, we, I'm going to jump on to Ian, who's on YouTube. He's asking, out of all of your accomplishments in relation to whiskey, um, so so marrying a Scot in a ballot doesn't count as an accomplishment yet. Oh. Um, what, it, this is two questions, because uh, I dare say that the one is not the same as the other. What is your happiest achievement, and what is your most surreal experience? Oh, that is so easy to answer, because it's my favorite experience. Uh, is Ian Bruce single? Just, just curious. Yeah. <laughs> There's only him the photo on his profile, so. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Uh, <laughs> put in two ballots there, Ian. Two at least two. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think my 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 best accomplishment, uh, or my most like the one that's most satisfying for me, is uh, is really watching the next generation of of women coming into the industry and coming in as writers and drinkers and. <laughs> Uh, I, I can't speak more highly uh, about Becky Paskin and and, and uh, the movement that she's she's working on, and it, it's phenomenal. You know, she's creating a um, a safe place for for women and men, honestly, like to to either drink, talk, be mentored, get information, do some training. Uh, she's she's 
what I had hoped would have happened in my 30s. Yeah. And so, you know, kudos to, kudos to her. I, I love the fact that she's at the bottom of the ladder holding on and, and letting everyone else, you know, climb up on her shoulders. She's she's intelligent. She's she's fantastic. She's got a great nose. She's uh, she's we're going to get photobombed by my cat here in a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She she's a, everything I wish I could have been in my thirties, and so I, I high praises yeah. to Becky and, and this is the Art Whiskey know, Foundation. Yes, uh, that you're yes, talking about, course, yeah. yes. Yeah. our Whiskey Foundation, phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal yeah. Uh, culture change that I'm so happy to see, like in in my lifetime. Like it, it's yeah. it's it's that's probably my greatest, you know, like having people stand up on our shoulders. Those of us that have been doing this for so much longer. That's number one. Number two, my. The, the, the <laughs> so picture this uh, crazy Canadian on her own on Isla with a bunch of crazy Danes and Germans. Uh, I know we were sitting in a church that was revamped to be a bed and breakfast. I know that much. It was like a Saturday morning. My friend Stefan and I, if Stefan's listening, hello, I miss you. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Uh, the most surreal experience was going to this church, which was across the street from Lafroig. I was waiting for Stefan to arrive. He texted me and said, grab a pizza at the Tesco. Absolutely. Went and grabbed a pizza, sat down, threw it in the oven. We sit down at the table while we're chit-chatting. His friend, John, walks through the door. No, don't know him from a hole in the ground. Stefan says, John, Joanne, Joanne, John. Hey, John, what are you guys doing? Eating pizza? Okay, great. Do you want a whiskey? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. By hey, the way. I didn't want to say that, but that's literally what I said. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, fucking absolutely. All right, yeah. John would be so proud. Uh, so he goes in the kitchen, he pours these Glen Clarens, and he comes out, and he, we're sitting at a picnic table inside. Like it was a very bizarre place. And so we start drinking, and I'm like, oh man, this is this is really nice. Like, this is good. You know, pizzas arrive. We're we're pairing these whiskeys with pepperoni cardboard pizza from the Tesco's. And uh <laughs> John says, do you want more? Absolutely. Pours another round. And Stefan finally is like, yeah, this is interesting, John. What is it? And John takes the bottle out of his bag and looks at it and goes, it's a Port Allen 1978. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's in the bottle? He's like, yeah. <laughs> And we're eating it with pepperoni, Tesco, cardboard pizza. He's like, yes. Yeah. It's like, wow. And I and my main like that the surrealness of the moment sitting in a church at a picnic table with a den, Mark, you know, a, a Dane and a and I come to find out afterwards, John actually owns um, a beautiful little inn on Loch Ness, and mm -hmm. he's like one of the biggest. Uh, collectors and somebody's probably gonna say his name. They probably know his last name. He's one of the biggest collectors. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he owns like one of the biggest collections of Port Ellens yeah, and yeah, just yeah. opens them for whatever. It's Tuesday. Plop. It's raining. Plop. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that pizza. No, it's so that's in the last probably, <laughs> Yeah. That was probably the most surreal moment for me as uh, this crazy little Canadian. Really? Not home with a bunch of strangers with some crazy yeah. Danes and Germans, like just. But that's exactly that's exactly what whiskey is all about. That yeah, is exactly. exactly. You, you talk yeah. about tasting. Do you, do you, have you met Abby Clefain? I'm sorry. Abby, what language are you speaking? Uh, <laughs> Gla, Gla, this is Glaswegian. I'm speaking pure Glaswegian now, right? By the way. Ah, oh, so, you dancer. Ah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Abby Clefain, um, Abigail. I think to her uh, oh, Sunday yeah. and her parents, oh, yeah. Abby, A B I, Abby Cliffane, C L E P H A N E. She was I brand ambassador. She's now she's now global brand ambassador for Brew Claddy. Um, nope. She was uh, brand ambassador, but you'll you'll maybe meet her at some point. She's, um, she's got a, a new promotion now. She's um, she's up a level now again. She, so she's global brand ambassador now. So she does a bit. She does a bit of writing for magazines, some of the top end magazines and things. But in those magazines, she regularly pairs. Octomore, Port Charlotte, and Brew Laddie with with the ten pence crisps, potato chips, nice. you know, like the, the corn chips, yeah, absolutely. Baby and tiny yeah, I it's love her already. Yeah, she needs to put her name in the auction. 
<laughs> no, you love having it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm sure that would work. I'm sure she has a whiskey collection. We would, you know, it, 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 it would be I, great. I, I get a feeling she'd be great. more happy. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. But she's great. She's just a, and I, I love that 10p crisps with uh, yeah. you know, whiskey. I and honestly this, believe whiskey can be paired with anything, to be quite honest. Jujubes, yeah. jujubes, yeah. anything. Yeah, I think it's yeah. harder, and I think it was was it Stuart Buchanan who uh, who told me this. So now I asked for his advice on on pairing with whisk, uh, with food. He says it's harder to get it wrong than it is to get it right, uh, and that, that that's kind of advice we've stuck by uh, quite quite through it. And I suppose the most important pairing is the people you're drinking it with. If, if they're having a laugh and they're telling stories and you're enjoying it, um, the, then the the whiskey doesn't become irrelevant, but it's almost just kind of the, the part of the whole conversation that's holding it together. Yeah. Um, the fabric um, to, to steal your, yeah. your 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 phrase there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we we always we quite often tell the story of Charlie McLean, who um, who is a, a legend in his own right mm. and uh, in his own mind too. Anyways, yes, keep absolutely. Going. <laughs> <laughs> He's a legend in everybody's mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving with Charlie. Yeah, brilliant. Love him. I love Charlie. Absolutely love him. Yeah. Um, so he, he, it was an annual event with his friends. He would go on a fishing trip. Uh, and after the trip, they would sit in their bothy, fire on, pass around whiskey. And Charlie's kind of one and only task was to bring the whiskey. And um, one day, or, or one particular trip, I think he was running late and he was a bit hashed and he, he had to stop off on the way, nip in the shop, grab a bottle of whiskey, and off they went. And, and so they, they cracked it open. It was kind of a one of the, a brief day, so they're looking forward to getting warmed up. They're all kind of huddled into the bottle. Charlie takes out the bottle and pours all the drama and pass it around. Uh, and of course, it's the best whiskey they've ever tried. It was amazing, great. Oh, Charlie, you've pulled this out of the hat once again. And when they asked him what it was, it, it was simply just like a. A thirteen ninety nine price stamped blend off the the garage shelf. <laughs> My God! <laughs> just, yeah, uh, uh, it became a mute point. It was like, well, yeah, and, and almost to the point where you're looking at it, why am I spending all this money on this really expensive grit? You know, when there's a time and place. When I, I, I often, I mean, for me. Um, because I drank it once at one of my first rugby matches, I took it in a hip, a hip flask, the Glen Glasser Revival. Mm. The Glen Glasser Revival, usually around about 40 pounds, 46%. It was young whiskey, but it's really good mm -hmm. stuff. But my, the very first time I had it in a hip flask was at Murrayfield, uh, watching Scotland playing rugby. So for me, it's the perfect hip flask dram now because I've got that yeah. lovely, wonderful party, proper Scottish festival kind of feel about it. So yeah. that's that's always going to be in my, in my hip flask when I go to that kind of event. Yeah. Um, so you, you just have that kind of, yeah. You know, why would you take anything more expensive? But that's that's pretty expensive as it is. Uh, but if it had been a Bell's, then, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so be it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I have these very, very weird moments, and they happen pretty much, uh, I'm going to say almost every single time. But it's like uh, I just, just did a class in Ottawa uh, last weekend where I had like 75. 75 was the master class, how many people I had sitting in my class. And uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter if there's just five people or 75. But there comes a moment where I stop talking and all of a sudden I'm like, all right, everybody just kind of like talk amongst yourselves. And I and I do this. And then when I look up at the room and see everybody smiling, talking, noses in their glasses, mm -hmm. everything goes into slow motion for me. And I get this calmness of like it, everything just stops and everything is right in the world and everything is perfect. And I, I get this moment of joy, like internal joy uh, that is only rivaled by having two small grandchildren, in all honesty. Uh, and, and it and then everything, you know, everything like everything stops. And then and then I, I kind of go, wow, like, fuck, this is amazing. And then yeah. boom, everything speeds up again. Yeah. And it happens so often. And yeah. for as long as that happens, I think I'm going to be, I'm going to be okay. It wouldn't matter what's in my glass. I'm going to be okay. And I know that, which is why 40 years later, I'm still enamored, still crazy, still writing, still loving, still presenting, still sounding like Rain Man, 
when I start talking about whiskey. You've, you've obviously got the skills to be on. You've done the creative writing all your life. And, and am I right in thinking you're, are you work, working on your first book just now? Or? Oh, Lord, you know what? I, I'm collaborating with someone on my first on our first book. Mm -hmm. It's been a process only because A, COVID, and then B, um, he decided to open a restaurant. <laughs> So, oh, that's so really inconsiderate. What the hell? Ooh, you know, no, but you know what? This is, I think this was his dream. Like, I think this was doesn't get a ticket for the ballot. Really no, that's not, that's not yeah. Happening. So yeah. I'm doing a lot of what I call the grunt work. I'm still doing a lot of research, but yeah, mm -hmm. we are working on a book together. Uh, and I have another idea, which I'm positive it would sell. It. I know it wouldn't make me a millionaire, but I really want to write a book about Michael Jackson. I just oh, do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to write about Michael Jackson. He's one of the few, like, uh, you know, mentors, stars, uh, figurative fathers, I guess, of, of the Whiskey Foundation or the Whiskey Fabric in my mind that I did not get to meet. And uh, I, I, it's like one of my regrets. It's one of the few regrets I have in, in, in the whiskey world is I didn't get to meet him because I, I love everything about him. There's something that's really important it, um, because for, for me, I mean, I'm, you know, in terms of working in the whiskey industry just four years, but I've been drinking for a long time, but my, my knowledge is it's, it's kind of going back the way. I'm trying to kind of go back to bring it forward. Um, and Michael Jackson is one of the guys that I never really got to know anything oh. about. But there's so many people like him. You're, you're Michael Jackson, you're Jim Swans, all these people. And there's almost a need to be able to capture yes. who these guys were and for, for, for somebody to be able to have that knowledge. Um, I, I, that would definitely work. Um, I'm sure that would work. Like yeah. I say, I know, I know, I wouldn't sell. I, I'm not, I'm not looking to be a millionaire anyway. I'm just looking to, to pass on that knowledge. Like there were these giants, these giants, you know, and, yeah. and he was one of them. Like he was just amazing. We we had we had Nick Morgan on um, a few weeks ago. Um, I was talking to Nick, him yesterday. <laughs> Nick, Nick's obviously got a couple of books on the go now, and I, I don't think he's thinking about making himself a millionaire just through selling books. But it just, but that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't be writing them. Yeah, you know, they they have to be written, and and you know. It's, it's a funny thing because if uh, us whiskey drinkers as we are, when we're not buying whiskey, we're, we're buying whiskey books. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the other kind of side of things. Anytime we're kind of, well, I'm going to stop buying whiskey for a wee while because I'm getting a row from the wife for how much I'm spending. You come home with a handful of books. It's not whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's education. It really is. Yes, it's research. It's yes, so right. important. It's research. Did you read Billy Abbott's book? I haven't read that one I, yet. No, but you will have, I think, will you? I haven't. No, no, I think I've, I've got it, but I haven't read it. It's um, good. It's, it's so background. Billy Abbott. It's so Billy yeah. Abbott. It's like you chuckle. Well, I did anyways, because uh, I yeah. had met Billy several times. I won't say we were good friends by any means, but he's come over to Canada a couple of times. And when I'm in London, uh, I tend to pop over. Or, or we go meet up. The man's obsessed with with fish dick, fish fish finger sandwiches. I think is what he calls oh, them. Oh, no, that's wrong. I, I've had one of them once. <laughs> <in the last time. laughs> we're, we're we're all over David Stark's book just now. Um, the independent bottling book that he's. Oh yeah. 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 Don't have that one yet. I, I read half of it on the first night. I I, I just could not put it down. But wow. It was really good. So there's um, one that I highly recommend that most people don't know about. Like if you really want to geek out on why we smell and why we taste and how our brain registers all this stuff. Just give me one second. Guys, keep your questions in. They uh, coming in by the way. Um, feel free to. Again, where I'm a chemistry geek and I really love to understand like what's going yeah. on behind it. This one I highly recommend. Whoop. You froze them. Hold on. Neurogastronomy. 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 Highly recommend it. If you really want to understand how the brain creates flavors and why it matters, it's by Gordon, Gordon Shepherd. I have Gordon read Shepherd. this book so many times that pages are starting to fall out. It is phenomenal as far as one. like, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then uh, again, this one's like, you can see how, bent and like the, the pages are earmarked proof the science of booze Oops. Cool. yeah um, Adam Rogers yeah I think um Tobias told me about that book amazing yep it it explains it explains so much like it it's um 
it's just it's just such a great I can't even I get tongue tied because it's one of my favorite books. I have read it probably seven or eight times or I really go into like somebody will ask me a question about like distillation or smell and taste or aging. Like the the chapters are yeast, sugar, fermentation, distillation, aging, aging, smelling and taste, body and brain and hangover. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> So, so Mike, Mike and I did a tasting two, two, two and a half weeks ago and um, Saturday. It was the night that Scotland beat Wales. Uh, that's all I remember. Because I, I put all that uh, matters. We, we we were out and about. So rugby, so Scotland are doing quite well this year in rugby. Famous last words. We play France oh, on yeah. Sunday. It's really important we win that one. Um, but uh, we were out at a hall at Keg, a place just outside Benahee in Aberdeenshire. Um, and what we did was there was there was a group of 30 or 40 and we just introduced the drams and then we just went around the room while they were drinking it just to kind of chat in little groups and what have you. Um, and this, I think it was the second or third dram I got around the far left corner and I discovered a guy who used to work in a yeast factory. And I was like, right, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm just sitting here now. I don't want to do any more work. I need to just talk to this guy for the rest yep. of the night. It was so hard to pull myself away from and I only really got five minutes of his knowledge, but I really want to get some time to sit down for a day and just yep. pick his brain. You know, I agree. It is because uh, it's a subject I just know nothing about. But the, the <laughs> small amount of knowledge he gave me just expanded my head much bigger than literally like yeast. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it all the rubbish and turned it into alcohol. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They poop, they poop or pee, they basically poop or pee alcohol. Poop or pee alcohol. I, I, yeah, yeah. I had a great an, uh, analogy of it as they, it was during our, I think we're doing a whiskey ambassador course. And um, they, is it they, they eat the sugar, then they poop alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That, that's what yeast is. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> or pee, or pee alcohol. Yeah. Hmm. It depends how much you want people to drink it. I'd rather pee. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather, rather yeah. sound like that. Yeah, I would yeah, do the pee. I would do the eat the poo, but I think <laughs> my dog eats poo, but that's a different story altogether. We, we won't even go there with that one. No, <laughs> How's that auction going? We haven't got a winner yet. We haven't what? got a winner. Yet. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. Ian hasn't replied telling us if he's single or not yet. Oh, he's probably married then. He, he's he's a whiskey mule, though. Hmm? So. He's offering to be a whiskey mule. Oh, whiskey mule. Yes, I know that terminology very well. Yes, yes. So, so there we go. Um, Bill Somerville is asking, oh, um, yes. what's your favorite Canadian whiskey show? Ah, he knows that answer. I'm not even going to say anything. Bill, you're still an asshole. Oh. <laughs> You're, you're out of the ballot, Bill. You're yeah, you're out of the ballot at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I have to, I have to say the one that's in my province. It's uh, which Bill used to come to on a regular basis, but of course with COVID, it just hasn't happened. Uh, the New Brunswick Spirits Festival, like I said earlier, it's the it's mm -hmm. the oldest uh, spirits festival in North, I think in North America. It's 27 years old, and uh, we bring in like big names. We bring in, like I say, the Urquharts. We bring in. Uh, who did we have? Who did we have last year? This year we had what? Why are you laughing? I'm oh. Sorry, you oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Ian. Sorry, I knew he was married. I knew it. All the good ones are married. I've just repeated it. Some of the guys, just, you know, some of the guys put the some of the guys put us on their on their big screen TV. Oh. Um. So yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I wore makeup then. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah. I, I upgraded my camera to make it HD, so it looks better. Um, but yeah, why, why doesn't the wife sit and watch us? Yeah, that's that's more of what my concern is that the wife doesn't enjoy watching us on the TV. But the daughter does. Yeah, the baby, the ball for you, mate. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to sell many tickets, mate. Is no. It? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't need your help, Russell. I don't need your help, Russell. No, you really don't. You really don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not offering booby prizes on the ballot. This was the second or third prize. Yeah. So, I could bring yeah. a Canadian hat, maybe, as a second prize. <laughs> I mean, 
Th- t- talking about like when you're coming back over and there's all these new distilleries and I know you can't reveal um, what you're potentially going to be getting involved in, but off off all the kind of new ones that are on the go and as, if we think about from Kilhoman onwards, mm-hmm. um, which of the the newer distilleries you might have had a chance to visit some of them before lockdown, but because there's quite a few of them have been on the go kind of since then, but off off the kind of newer ones that are on the go just now, which are the ones that excite you the most? Uh, Balandalak. Mm. I don't even have to think twice about that one. Mm. I really loved. Uh, mm. I really loved what I got to taste. I really loved the experience. I really loved. Uh, it, it was just a very quaint, intimate. Um, I, I really want to say like they promote themselves on a state as an estate distillery, and what you see is what you get. And I love the honesty in that. So that one was really wonderful to be able to actually uh, like go in. I don't want to say carte blanche because obviously. Yeah, you don't want to sound like an asshole when you say, well, because it's because I, I am granted special access, maybe. Like, I don't like saying that that way because it makes yeah. you sound pretentious. But yeah, because yeah, you're yeah. there to write an article, because you're there, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you yeah. get the, the VIP treatment, which is wonderful. Um, and I don't I don't pull that card. Like, sometimes I go to a distillery and I don't say anything. I just walk in and I'm just a regular person and I'm enjoying the distillery as we, is. Right? We, so, we know exactly what you mean because in the, in the yeah. trade, you're treated differently as well. I mean, you know, you, you do get behind the scenes of, of stuff that you wouldn't get as a customer. So we're very, very, very lucky in that regard. Yeah. And there are some people that treat you, everybody treats you very well. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. No, no matter what. Exactly. Sometimes there's a connection with... Uh, with a distillery or, or, or the staff that work there that, that, that makes that a little bit different. And you've mm-hmm. obviously picked up the Ball and Dally. Yeah. There you go. Uh, the it other is, one that I really it, enjoyed was Ardnaho. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Stunning, mm-hmm. stunning, stunning. Yeah. yeah. Really beautiful place. So those yeah. are the two that I can think of right off the top of my head. Uh, and I'm trying to think if there was another one that I really liked just recently. And the last time I was there was 2019, which is four years ago, which, you know, oh, bothers yeah, me. Yeah, because, I know. There, there's yeah. been whiskey distilled, matured and released in that time, John, that you haven't yeah. had the chance to yeah. come and visit. Oh, there was another one way up north, right before you go to Orkney. Wolfburn. 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 Gosh, that's almost like an old distillery now. I know that <laughs> that yeah. was a surreal experience. Yeah. That was yeah. surreal, and that's me being very polite because yeah. I think my expectations were. I literally thought we were at the wrong place. Like I was just. I don't think we're at the right distillery. Um, but but it was surreal, and uh, because I'm I'm a I'm an adventurous kind of. Well, you know what? We're here. Let's just go in. Uh, mm-hmm. I really, I enjoyed what I got to try. I really enjoyed the product. I, I think it's got massive potential. And if I compare it to a lot of the other distilleries that are putting stuff out, like at three years old, I, I, I think their product is really good. Personally, I think their product is really good. I've had other people go, oh God, no, this is not my thing. And I'm like, well, I, from a chemistry perspective, the DNA is there. Like I see, I see the potential. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of it, isn't it? That people are looking for, from it at completely different angles uh, and that, that's what gives us the scope to to say well <laughs> I, I, I suppose as long as you you respect the spirit like it or not if you respect it then i think that's all they're asking for isn't it this this, this is good this will suit somebody's palate it's not my palate. yeah there's a way of telling well, people it's not for you rather than saying, oh it's bogging where, where does chemistry come in in terms of if, if chemistry answers all the questions and you're thinking well, well as far as chemistry is concerned this should be good but yet people like just this kind of real funky farmyard weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, how does that kind of compute then? Well, like everything else in life, like, um, you know, I, I call it the asparagus test. Mm. Are you familiar with it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you, Mike? I'm not. No. no. Okay. So this is all chemistry, your, your biochemistry, which I, I dabbled because of my degree, I had to have electives and I chose biochemistry. So the body is a very bizarre entity because the way I digest asparagus and the way you digest asparagus is completely different. The way I smell a key lime pie and the way you would smell a key lime pie is completely different. There's something in my DNA that when I pick up a Brussels sprout, my body, my, my mouth waters. I love the smell of the Brussels sprout. Don't ask yeah. me why. It's just my chemistry. It's my biochemistry. 
So asparagus, um, like peat, I would say a lot of people, the minute they, you even, like if I were to open this next to my friend Heather, uh, I would even have to be next to her. I could open it in the next room. And she would yell out, put the cork back on, the freaking peated, blah, 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 blah. Like she cannot, she could smell this 20 miles away, I'm sure of it. Um, asparagus, mm, it's like 60% of the population doesn't have the the enzymes or the biochemistry to register that they're eating asparagus. And how you know is those of us who can is because you eat the asparagus and within 20 minutes, if you go to the bathroom, your pee smells different. Mm. Mm. It smells like, it doesn't smell like a pear, asparagus. You just, you've got, sudden, to remind, like, you've got to remind yourself because like, what the, oh yeah, I've been eating asparagus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how different the biochemistry is. So of course, if I was raised on a farm, which I mostly was as a child. I was raised in the country. I was raised in the woods. I get very distinct and, and they register with me right away because it's something my body registers. It's something my body knows. There's nothing better than a, a whiskey that smells like a hay barn for me. Like the minute I smell hay, I'm just, my mouth starts to water. I get that feeling of, oh, this is going to be nice, right? So yeah. yeah. So everybody, everybody's biochemistry reacts differently to, I can't eat liver. Okay. And I get that. So, but how, how does the, 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 the kind of maybe standard chemistry, where does that come in? You mean as far as uh, like the neurogastronomy, which is what we were talking, what I was talking yeah, about so with if, regards to the if book? You were, if you were to say, you know, on paper, this should be a great whiskey. Right? Yeah. So, because the chemistry tells you that it should I be. I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what you're talking about is like, I'm talking about when when somebody distills a whiskey and from a chemistry perspective, like you have heads, hearts, tails. Yep. Yeah. Roughly your heads, you should let your heads run off till about 80 to 79%, roughly. And I'm not quoting anybody's, you know, yeah. recipes or anything like that. Yeah, average, then, average, average, yeah. Right. And then you run the hearts. Okay. Now we flip it over, flip it over. We're, we're putting the hearts in, in yep. the, you know, the holding tank, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we'll, we'll run those until about like mm, 72. Right. And then after that, you're getting rid of the, the tails because the tails smell like cabbage. They, they smell like fuselage. In French, it's called fuselage. It's like diesel-y, dirty, steak that sat in a pot for too long like it's really meaty it's really it's disgusting Plastic so cheese. Yeah, yeah. cheese bad hockey bag yeah. dirty feet yeah. whatever it's just it's mm -hmm. horrendous it gets worse as you know the further down you go so again like a, a clean spirit a clean spirit it is somewhere between that 72 to you know that, that range and when mm -hmm. it comes off the still depending on the process depending on the size of the still the length whatever you you can smell like you're like yeah that's clean it's it, it's clean yeah. it's mm -hmm. you know until you go to somewhere like glen scotia or you go to uh mortlock right exactly Cri so, like that, yeah. so you look at like what i call yeah. the the ones that go, let's run her, let's run her, let's go into a little yeah. bit of the the dank because yeah. we want a bit of dank in there. Yeah, absolutely. And, so, uh, dank, so dank, dank, I'm a dankist then, obviously. I'm a dank. <laughs> I like dank. Hashtag dankist. <laughs> I've, I've swam in the dank vat. I have, yeah. I have. Uh, you know, and so like some, some distilleries push the barriers. They want that bit of funky flavor. Yeah. They want a bit of the, what I call the weirdo, the weirdo, you know, yeah. perspective, yeah. because for me as a whiskey consumer, like you have to remember that your olfactory is, is like, as soon as you smell in, this is going to sound bizarre. When I say this, I almost have to draw it from a chemistry perspective. You have, you have compounds that, that come into your olfactory and it's almost like they look like like puppies or arms or they have like they're a, you know a ball but then they've got like sticks sticking out mm -hmm. the the stick that has nothing on the end is looking to grab um a spot to fit in like you know what i mean so if mm -hmm. if my chemistry says if my chemistry has that spot that i like and all of a sudden the dank you know the 
peat comes through the phenolic yeah. acid and my brain goes, Oh, you like that. It's like my olfactory will grab a hold of that arm and hold on to yeah. it, process okay. it. And your body goes, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So clean spirit is really nice. Uh, when I'm looking at a new make, it's like, I, I want to be able to, to smell it. I don't want to smell baby vomit. I don't want to smell uh, dirty diapers. I don't want to smell. I don't want the inside of my nose to be on fire because they went too high in the heads. Um, yeah. You, you kind of get this feel. And I think every distiller and everybody that starts working in the field, like they don't even have to look at where it is on, on the percentages. Like they can smell it. They're like, there it is. Time to flip. There it is. Boom. Flip. They, they recognize that smell. Yeah. So it's really come down the line of able to nose a whiskey and think, yeah, th yeah, this is definitely a good whiskey. There's nothing wrong with that. Chemically, this is sound. And yes. then going into, yeah, oh my God. Oh yeah, this has got something else. Yeah. And that, and yeah. that's the that's the difference. The, whether you like that clean one, that chemically, a chemistry mm -hmm. sound one, that is a sound whiskey. It, it's got it's got to pass the test. Yeah. I prefer this. I prefer this one with a little bit of rough. It's got a bit of that funk, a bit yeah. of that dance. Yeah, that's, 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 that that's what your blenders, your master blenders, or, or blenders are doing when they're nosing. I mean, it's impossible for them to nose intensely every single cast sample. So they literally go. Go along the lines, yeah. uh, and if they get clean, then they're fine. They're not examining the whiskey. They're just getting clean, clean, clean. Oh, that different. Put it aside. Clean, clean. Put that one aside. Yeah. And, and then, then they'll go back and say, "Well, why and is this so like, what is. Is, is good? Is good? Yeah. Or, or is, is, uh, is it a good dank? Is a bad dank? I suppose there's two sides to dank, isn't there? Well, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a, there's a Kabokin, and we've got we've got to Scott Adamson on next week. Actually, Scott Scott from I love Scott. Um, oh. So there's, there's a kabokin that he did with the Japanese sochu, but mm -hmm. I would have to say the first time you nose that drink, it is absolutely offensive. Mm -hmm. The second time, it's okay. The third time, it's like wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first time, like, what, what Jesus? What is that? And then, what, yeah. and it pulls you. It pulls you in, and that's the kind of whoa is, that you're looking for, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, for me. I can, I can tell right away if something's been aged in a Hungarian virgin oak. It's offensive to me. Okay. It's automatically okay. offensive. There's no even, there's no even, it's like the minute someone pours it and I, I literally just go bunk and then I just stare at them and go, was this aged in a Hungarian oak virgin barrel? And they go, yes. And they're very proud of the fact. And I'm yeah. like, thank you. And then I just walk away and I pour it out. <laughs> Like, great news, but where are you going? Are you, are you, yeah. are you still are you Thank still you. doing that kind of are you still doing that work? Are you still doing the judging? Are you still doing any of that? Um, I was just talking to Davin the other day, actually. He gave me a call because he he read my article in uh in the malt review and uh he thanked me for mentioning him because he was a huge mentor for me when I first started out as one of the whiskey judges here if in you Canada. Thank you. Yeah. And uh he I I I I pick, I say, I say I'm a retired whiskey judge. And he was like, we can change that. You can come back. And I'm like, <laughs> not really. I'm way past so that. He's retired every year for the last 15 years. So you can come back out of retirement anytime. Yeah. 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 It, it's hard being a whiskey judge. It's not an easy feat. Like, no, you know, I've, like done it, I've done it a few times. And it's, it's, uh, by the end of the day, I still do it for <laughs> beer. I love being a beer judge. It's not as intense. Um, <laughs> But when you're a whiskey judge, it's like you're, you know, you, you could you could do 40 samples. And after 40 samples, you're like, I don't ever want to fucking see another whiskey. Like, you're just like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't just pour me a beer. Give me a gin and tonic. Like, yeah. you're like, I'm done. Yeah. I don't want another whiskey. So get, um, get, wine, get wine -y. Mm, mm. Yeah. And then you add all, like, what I call the flavored whiskeys that are on the market right now. Oh, really? Mm. The Jack yeah. Daniels stuff? Yeah. The Crown, the Jack Daniels Honey, the Crown Royal mm -hmm. Peach, the Fireball. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I sent Dave Worthington. Do you guys know Dave Worthington? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I sent him, he's my whiskey brother. He's like, he's the yeah. older brother I never wanted. Yeah, um, never wanted. <laughs> never wanted. He knows that I, I say that with love. He's the older brother I never wanted. Um, he, he, I was talking about having just finished whiskey taste or whiskey judging and and it was the first year we had crown royal maple syrup crown royal maple whiskey mm -hmm. and i was sick to my stomach for two days like i swear to god it was just so sweet i thought i was going to go into a diabetic coma 
Anyways, he said, if you have a chance, send me a sample. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So I did. And I waited a few weeks and then he received it and uh, he tasted it. I won't tell you what he thought about it, but he had to throw the bottle out because the bottle was officially wrote off because all it reeked is, is, is maple. Like you couldn't, there was no whiskey. It was just boozy maple syrup. Like it was yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And Crown Royal knows how I feel about that. This is not a disclaimer. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Good stuff. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Um, Ian, Ian Bruce has put, put in a question and, and I guess it's, uh, yeah, but we could. I'll pop it on um, for you. Uh, before you ask, before you ask the question, uh, James, we've just James DeGillo has just had to order Billy Abbott's last book because yay! I just ordered Billy's book. I, I thought I was done with my whiskey library, but he's realised he's got us. You're never book. done with a whiskey library. Oh. Uh, never. <laughs> and done. it's a it's a really quick we, read too. It's a super quick yeah, read. We need, we need to give a space book. for Joanne's book when it comes out, guys. Because yeah, uh, exactly. No. So, so Ian's asking, um, does any distiller ever bottle new make during a batch and then keep it aside? I think legally they have to keep a sample of new make um, from every batch anyway. Um, I don't think they do it for the reason that you're asking um, to compare from the cask um, after it's matured, but legally they have to keep a sample from, from the dist. From Let the me list. read that again. Let me read that again. I mean, Hollywood are bottling a new make, Ian. I think so. So they've made a batch because obviously we make whiskey, we, the, the royal we, the industry we, um, we do a batch of whiskey, um, and then from that batch, and and they we keep they, they have to keep samples at every stage, don't they? Because if something goes wrong, they have to they go back and say, well, it's not the it's not the distill. It maybe the the grain. Where did the grain come from? Because because they do it for farmers as well. If mm -hmm. cows become ill off the the, the the draft, they can trace it all the way back. So for that reason, they keep the every sam a sample from every stage of production. Um, I don't that they maybe have. I don't. Uh, I would be lying if I told you this is gospel. But I'm putting my legs up here for a minute. Um, yeah. I I can tell you that I was at Waterford Distillery in 2019. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that was that was a mind blowing, surreal experience. Um, I actually call it mind fuckery because I was totally baffled by the, the end of the day. But we yeah. went into it's we went into the laboratory and they did have like they had uh, they had all kinds. I think bottles and bottles and bottles of the new make um, all lined up like on shelves like this like just everywhere they were just everywhere and they were a fairly new distillery too when i went there in 2019 they were still kind of yeah. like they were just about ready to start putting stuff on the market uh so yes i'm gonna say that distillers i, I know of one distillery for sure that i've been to where i actually got to walk through the lab and and saw for myself that they keep all the new makes i might have caught yeah. home with a few bottles actually <laughs> yeah you know, well, you know, I think the biggest trick that waterford missed was bottling the new make and selling it as as Hollywood do, as Lindo do. Because well, you know, for for that Edouard discussion to happen, for me personally, it needs to you need to see the difference in the new make. As soon as you put in the cask, that that's an unveil available that you have no control over. Nope. So you can, yeah, you, know, you nope. and you can you blend it together to suit a flavor profile or not to suit a flavor profile as as the case may be, but to, to get over that line or to get over that terroir experience that I try to prove, I think we need to taste it as new mix work. Mm -hmm. Without the cast to see each farm's influence on that. Yeah. I, I love I love everything Waterford are doing. My only problem with Waterford is that I don't have enough time in my life to follow them <laughs> like I want to. I I almost feel I almost feel like I'd have to dedicate a year to just drink and follow Waterford to be able to understand what the hell's going on. Because every single time you dip into it, you just think, I need to know more. Um, yes. yeah. And when you, and oh my God, I mean, geez, well, okay, you're talking about getting a guy in in, a, in Scotland, for goodness sake, Johan, and a, a, a guy from Southern Ireland with the accent, you know, so if anybody is based in Scotland with a Southern Irish accent, 
them, then that's the whole kind of thing. Christ, I'd marry them. Um, <laughs> The, the the farmers that they've got the farmers that have got in the videos are just fantastic. It's just the the story the whole story is wonderful. And Mark, Mark is just superb. I love the fact that he ruffles everybody's feathers as well. Mm-hmm. He's a disturber. We call him oh, disturber. Really? He's a disturber. And he yeah. loves it. He loves it. And I love that about him. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed meeting Ned. Like Ned is just this. He's the epitome of what I think my my mother's father would have been I didn't get to meet him mm-hmm. he passed away before I was old enough but he was Irish and uh I, Ned mm-hmm. is just like I I fell in love with Ned I can't marry yeah. him either it's you know I, I seem to fall in love with people who are just I don't know what can I tell you Ned, but, Ned was uh, the pure distiller, wasn't he? yeah yeah so he really understands what like, we've, all, we've all done that awesome. I fell in love I fell in love with the Abba girls listen we've all done <laughs> We've all done. We've all done that. We've all done that. You know, like, it's, you just got to. You just got to deal with it. I'm still. I still I'm still there. I still think. Okay. A, I still think it's doable. <laughs> Russell, normally it's one or the other, but you, you just thought, well, I'll double my chances. You know, what, what's double do you? <laughs> Jesus, any, anything from me, because Matthew McConaughey to the Abba Girls to yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a conversation one time about. I think her name is Halle Berry. Oh, oh yeah, stop yeah. It. Stop, it. Stop, it. stop it. Stop it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The conversation, and this happened oh, during a whiskey. Go- she's gorgeous. This happened during a whiskey tasting. There was five or six of us sitting around a bonfire, <laughs> like three guys, two girls, and one of the guys said something to his wife about a hall pass. We were like, "What is he talking about?" Anyway, <laughs> his hall pass was his hall pass was ha- Halle Berry. Yeah. And so my friend Louise and I are like, "What are they talking about?" So they explained it. And, and so he, he said, Louise is like your hall pass. She's, she's just like, yeah, if Halle Berry like showed up at the door, like my wife would let me just, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And of course the wife was like, like hell, Halle Berry's going to show up at the door. I want you like, come on. Right. Anyways, we laughed about it, but then I kind of thought about it. I was like, yeah, she showed up at my door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say no. You crazy. It's Halle Berry. Like, what? <laughs> there was a, it was, it was a TV advert, wasn't it, that had that? And there was a, um, and the husband and wife oh, were saying, yeah, she, 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 she said, said your brother something, didn't she? Yeah. Hey, no, I think he, he said something like, oh, your sister. It's Joanne from work. <laughs> and oh. it's like, what? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your sister. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think the idea of the whole past is that that's impossible to get. Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. that's what that's so, My mine would be Natalie Portman and Tony knows Aww. that. And uh, yeah. so there's uh, absolutely yeah. She is. Um, so so yeah, there's the but the, the key is guys don't go turning and round to your your wife Ian. I know she's not in the room, but next time you meet her, don't just say. I've got a new uh, hall pass. It's uh, it's Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do Bad that. Bad idea. <laughs> but he, 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 the, here's the age-old question: Is Mark right or wrong with whiskey terroir? Ooh. Oh, you're opening up. I'm just. <laughs> 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 Let's get back to seven o'clock and start again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll get Mark back on and we'll discuss that with Mark yeah. himself. How it's, about those uh, Glasgow Rangers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we said at the start of this. Oh, right. You're right. I'm yeah. so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. And there's a cup final this weekend as well. Rangers and Celtic, <laughs> old firm cup final. It's got nothing to do with what we do here. But this is the northeast of Scotland. This is not the central belt. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. There are other football teams in Scotland, by the way, guys. There's anybody, there's, there's 40 other ones, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, who were we? I, I've forgotten. Um, we were talking terroir, and then we were talking... Um, and then we got on to Halle Berry and all hell broke oh, loose. Yeah. I have no <laughs> idea what we're talking about anymore. You know what? How bad it was great. How bad it was great up until Catwoman. That ruined her for me. Which is crazy to say that because she was dressed in half a costume of latex the whole time. But it just... <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we've got to speak about the guys. I mean, you've, you've seen the you've seen the gentleman, haven't you? You've seen the gentleman. Yes. With Matthew. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. He's a boy. Come on, Russell. We know we all know who your true man crush is. My 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 text my text ringtone is a. Uh, um, oh gosh, I need to do it. I need all, to right, it. all right. All right. All right. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so, so Russell's true man crush is Stuart Buchanan. It is no Stuart Buchanan. Buchanan. Jesus Christ, well, why wouldn't it be? Exactly. <laughs> why, why, yeah, I see your eyes. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Handsome motherfucker. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> so back to those Rangers. <laughs> yeah, back to those Rangers. New York Rangers. Yeah, yeah Texas. Yeah. Good Cubs. Uh, those no. are two pros. Patriots. Yeah. 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 Moving swiftly on. Um, so, so is that your part of town? So I guess that's your closest football team, is it? The yes, Patriots? moving the Patriots. And I've been yeah. I've been a fan since I was probably 14 or 15 years old. So we're, we're this should be painting a picture. I am not a traditional female. I work in a male-dominated field. I love football. I drive. Well, I like to sit on the back of motorcycles. I don't like to drive mm. motorcycles. I, I sail. Think, I drink whiskey. I think, uh, it's nothing to do with being traditional female. I think you're the kind of female that everybody in here would like to be friends with. And uh, so, so football, so obviously Tom Brady then. So no. What, no, <laughs> no, no. He won you all your titles. Oh, listen, I'm good. This is how honest I am. And, and I have like, I'm not a Patriots bandwagon fan. Like I've been a Patriots fan since mm -hmm. when, when they were in the shitter. That's yeah. what we call it here in Canada, yeah, yeah. In the dumpster mm -hmm. fire. Uh, yeah, I've loved were, them since they were, they were really in the dumpster shit. fire. Yeah, yeah. They rose out of the dumpster fire. We had Drew Bledsoe, who was amazing. And then we had Brady for a number of years. But if if I still stand on my statement, which I said a couple of years ago and I got booed, but I don't care, we should have got Brady. We should have got rid of Brady probably four or five years ago to get a better succession plan because it was oh, Brady, yeah, yeah. Brady, yeah. Brady, 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 Brady. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we now we have a shitty succession plan. So it was all about Brady. So, so Belichick wasn't a big enough succession plan? Mm. How about those Rangers? <laughs> Do not get me started on American football. Yeah. Oh my God! Like, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, guess, I guess the uh, the the loyalty to Brady goes on so far uh, that it's like almost flogging a dead horse. You're 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 keeping him there for the sake of keeping him there. That the the, the shirts that he sells and the autographs and the cry that he brings, but on the field, you know, he was mediocre. In the end, he was mediocre. Like you know, and. Yeah. Uh, you, you sell, as you say, four or five years ago, you sell them, you get top dollar for them. You could buy two or three replacements for that. Yeah. And the, the whole crew went to Bucks. I mean, Gronk, the mm -hmm. Gronk went Gronk there left. Well, didn't yeah. yeah, Gronk left. Uh, uh, and a lot Gronk. of fans left. Yeah. A yeah. lot of fans yeah. left. Like a lot yeah. of what I call the bandwagoners. Oh, well, we're going to follow. Oh, the Buccaneers are amazing, right? And they did. They won the Super Bowl the very next year while he was there, which is fine and dandy. But I don't, I don't, I still stand on my statement, which is I really felt like we should have put our money somewhere else and and created a better succession plan because now you're going to see the decline and we're going to go back down and I'm okay with that. I'm still going to show up at the games with all my beads. But uh, well, Andrew, have you ever seen the film Any Given Sunday? Yes. That, yeah. that, it's almost like that with, with Cap Dennis Squid's character. Um, Get, gets injured, so he's like the hero and the the the, the stalwart, the kind of uh, yep. the 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 Brady, I, I suppose. And he gets injured, and the little Jamie Fox, uh, Jimmy Beeman, I think his name is, in the yeah, the, comes in. The little upstart comes through. Um, I mean, I learned everything I know about American football from that film. I think it's it's one of I, I'm not the biggest fan, but that movie is outstanding. Yeah, um, nailed it. Nailed it. So Russell, if you haven't seen any given Sunday, it's good. Any given Sunday. Any I'll, given I'll, Sunday. I'll, I've got a DVD. I'll bring it down to you on Saturday. And, What's a DVD? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, you'll, you'll find it on Netflix. Yeah, sorry. We, I, I think I've even got it on VHS. <laughs> I've got it on VHS. I don't have it on Betamax. Sorry, sorry. You. <laughs> I just gave my nose a whiskey enema. Not pleasant. Oh. 
Do you know what? I was... Um, I'm I was the young one here. What are you asking about DVDs I up, for? I was up in Inverness yesterday and um, to, to see my daughter. She's up She's up in Inverness now. Um, but they, her, 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 boy, her boyfriend have both got um, a lot of albums. She's picking up... She's just basically just taking all my old ones because they're in the shed. I'm not going to use them again. I don't have a turntable. Um, <laughs> but, but they're really heavily into it. And I, I got home and I thought, you know what, you guys are getting really heavily into collecting albums. You are going to, at some point, realise what a huge amount of space those fuckers take up. Because, <laughs> because there was a reason we had CDs, and that was because albums were too bloody big and they took up too much space. And then there was a reason why we got rid of all that shit. And it's yes. all on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's all so, in yeah. the cloud. It's all in the cloud. <laughs> so what's a DVD? Yeah. Yeah. What's a DVD? <laughs> I was working at Blockbuster when the I was working at Blockbuster when I was 18, 19 years old when the DVD revolution took over and I remember having to take off the the videos uh, the off videos. the shelves and replace them. Yeah. yeah, VHS, all that. I, I yeah. was there when it happened. I was oh front God. front line front line of the DVD revolution. I was we were playing pool <laughs> at uh, I played pool from my pub as well. and they were chatting about videos and stuff and there was a, a lad there with no idea what vhs was what cassette was and it was like how can you not know and he was like born like 20 years ago didn't have a clue and he's it was like, he obviously knew but he never experienced it and i was like yeah, i never had a video i never had a cassette yeah. his first experience was cds and dvds it's like, oh. scary and i mean we won't even talk about what was it? Not beta. What was the other one that was like Betamax, Blu-ray? Blu-ray. Yeah, Blu-ray. Oh, Blu-ray was supposed to be like this amazing, you know. Like, yeah, they were, the, they were the MP3 of the the film world, weren't they? There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. MP3s were the next big thing. I just saw a yeah. comment pop up from somebody, but I don't recognize the name. And he called me Joe, so I have a funny feeling he might know me. I don't know. <laughs> James, James DeGillo. What did he pop up? James DeGillo. You need to uh, visit Norfolk Wine and Spirits. Do you do much travel in England? Because they've got quite a, uh, an up-and-coming whiskey industry just now. Norfolk Wine and Spirits. Yeah. Norfolk's uh, a county in England. Norfolk, Norfolk like Suffolk. You know, as a tractor boy. They speak a little bit like the West Country. The lake tractors in any country. Russell, you're not saying they like tractors, given your background. No, tractor boys. The tractor boys are not. They're Suffolk. Suffolk, you're tractor boys. Ipswich is a tractor boys. Is that near the English Whiskey Company, St. George's? Well, Nor yeah. Norfolk is no? uh, English Whiskey Company in Norfolk. I think. That's what I thought. No, no. He's talking about near Boston. He's talking about near Gillette Stadium. I know oh. exactly what he means. Now I'm okay. understanding where right. he is. Oh, wait, wait, I was wait, just wait, like, what are you talking about? about? Is, yes. There's a Norfolk over there as well. There's a Norfolk. Yes, Norfolk. there is. Yes, there is. And uh, James, <laughs> James, I I have led whiskey tastings at that store, uh, as well as attended some really great ones with um, Emroot, uh, or um, oh my God, what's the other one that blows my mind? It's it's got pieces of charred cask right in the bottle. Black Adder. <sighs> Great. You see, black black adders. Like, I've, I've seen, I've seen those. I've never picked one up. Oh but, my gosh! But black adders also a great television series over here. Yes, yeah. I'm very familiar with that as well. Yeah. I'm that age. Yeah. Um, we're confusing England and the US twice there. You see, or Britain and the US. With, uh... <laughs> the black adder whiskeys are highly peated, and most of them, anyways. And it's literally like you taste the char like you taste the char it's probably it's probably the peatiest of whiskeys as far as like what i call real peat a saturday mm. before the game would be great <laughs> that sounds like an invitation yeah ah yeah. i'll talk i'll talk to the owner next time i'm coming um, down uh, uh James, i actually did a tasting there on december 24th one year which was hilarious and then the very next morning somebody stole the tires off of a car so <laughs> it's just <laughs> 
I, I'm just hoping James <laughs> isn't trying to get an edge on this ballot. J- James better not just be trying to sweeten the deal on this ballot now. He's oh, so trying to hand antics here, James. You, you can't just whisk her off to Norfolk. <laughs> James, are you single and where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> And send me a right. picture of your boat. Just send me a picture of your boat. Don't care what you look like. Send me a picture of your <laughs> boat. I think he's on it in his picture. If you look closely enough, that's maybe I him can't on see. Right. Yeah, I can't no, see. he's on a ferry. <laughs> <laughs> he's on a ferry. He's on a ferry on the way to Isla there, mate. Ah, he's, ah. he's sitting there thinking, private boat? I've got a private ferry. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Married, but of I'm course. And I'm, I'm going to bring up this no comment from Ian. Um, look at these two profile pictures. Are very similar. Ah. The you there? Ah, we on the yeah. same boat. Yeah. James and Ian, uh, uh, he's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ian's, Ian's on land. He's on the he's on the shore. He's on land. I think. Hmm. Yeah. Ian's <laughs> looks like that was taken at. Um, <laughs> I know <laughs> that distillery. Ian's is taken at Bunahaven, I bet you. Or like Bunahaven. Yeah, it looks like it. Is yeah. that the Pabst of Buna behind him? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, I only see, you know, this big, but I, that's what it looks like to me, Bunahaven. Yeah. 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 It's, see? Um, Geekery. Geekery. So, so your, 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 your Arnoho experience is just around that coast, around yeah. the cold Yeah. Because it, it's just, the paps are there, yeah. Literally, so, you can so, sit on the deck and almost spit on yeah. the Isle of Jur, or yeah. the, um, what's the name of the river that runs river. between Jura. It's not a river. Sound. It's a sound. The sound, the sound. Yeah. The sound, sound. of Jura. Yeah. Told you, English is not my first language. Mike's, Mike, Mike's going to, uh, so uh, have, have you spoken with uh, Nick, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Holy Raven, Mike. Nick Ravenhall. Ravenhall, dude. Nick, no, yes, we haven't. So, so Nick Ravenhall is a distillery manager. At, um, he's a he's a Kiwi, uh, handsome son of a bitch, as uh, would have been said in the old uh, the gentleman film. Um, but he um, is in charge of Holyrood just now. But him and his mates once a year, every year, swim the Corrie Vrecken. Oh, are you because, kidding me? Because they're Kiwis and they're fit and they're you know what I mean. These guys are ridiculously handsome and fit and hunky. But yeah, they do it at low tide. Um, it's it's uh, a mile. Uh huh. Just a mile. Oh, yeah. um, they do it at low tide, so they've got to they've got to do it in like a certain period of time before the tide comes up. Um, but the interesting thing about it is they all they all set off within like eight meters of each other. Um, but by the time they get to the far side, because of the currents, they'll be about mm-hmm. eight hundred yards apart. By the time they get to the far side, but yeah, they do it every year. So I've actually been on a jet boat in the Corey Brecken. It was a birthday present to my wonderful Welsh friend, Jo Lawson, who's another wonderful whiskey woman that's batshit crazy, and I love her to death. I hope she's listening. Uh, and Martin Nouet. I brought Martin Nouet on a jet boat. And if you don't know who she is, you got to look her up. She's uh, She was one of the only – actually, she still is the only female malt maniac in the whole world. And uh, brilliant, brilliant French woman who lives on the Isle of Isla. Uh, and, uh, again, it's all about, it's all about the experience. Like we went out on, on, on at low tide at, at, at the mm-hmm. large, you know, the largest, and, the, and we had to hold on for dear life, like going through yeah. the eddies, we call them eddies. Uh, and then, and then when we got out of the craziness of the eddies, we, we just, the, the, the captain just stopped and I'm talking like I called, it was these kind of pours. Yeah. Right. Two fingers, two finger yeah. pours. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we were we were well on our way, or yeah. properly pished is what I would call it. And then <laughs> out of the blue, here we are, just sort of floating. You know, the tide has come up, and all of a sudden, I hear bagpipes, and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm drunk. I, I hear bagpipes, <laughs> and this other little boat came out of nowhere, and he had a piper standing like <laughs> on front of the, and they stopped, and we all just stood there with our mouths like. Ah, uh, and he came over, and they poured Corey Vrecken in our glasses, and then they oh. wandered off. And it, we thought right. it was part of the show. Like, and I looked at our captain. I was like, "Well, that's amazing. Thank you for, thank you for arranging that." And he's like, "I have no bloody clue who the hell that was." Like, it was just oh, 
<laughs> again, whiskey experiences. Drinking the Cory yeah. Brecken on the Cory Brecken yeah. with like yeah. a boat full yeah, of whiskey. It's like, yeah. it amazing, amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. I'm in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're, no, you're, you're, you're going to be here. here. You're going to be here full time soon. We'll have you married. Okay. Um, is, uh, are, are, one of the things I want to know are, is there a distillery or a place on on the Scottish mainland that you haven't been to that you desperately want to get to? Yes. Come on. <laughs> She's not telling us. Just yes, yeah, yes. It yeah. It's my nemesis. It's my kryptonite. Okay. Uh, I've had two opportunities and for one one no offense to you know whoever was trying to get me there but the place caught fire <laughs> so i didn't get to go oh, okay. uh sure. but mortlock god i want to see mm -hmm. mortlock i want to see okay. the insides of mark i want to see mortlock mortlock is like deservingly the beast of dufton and i yeah. i uh it's probably like space age oh man i'm just like mm -hmm. it's uh I want to see it before I die. You know, I've got about a good 30 years ahead of me as far as I'm concerned, but like I would pay my eye teeth. I would give away my firstborn to be able to visit Mortlock. <laughs> I hope she's not. And, 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 and are you going to be able to understand in any potential computer? The distillation. Or, yeah, the distillation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The matrix. Yeah. Like yeah. I get it, I get it. Yeah. I've seen the board. I can follow it, like the little so lights, got, the neurons. You've got, a, you've got a stand on one leg, yeah. and press the button at the same time as the aurora borealis. Yes, one eye over. It's in conjunction with Jupiter. Yes. And, uh, on a Tuesday I, night after the Tuesday. virgins have picked the mangoes in Peru, absolutely. Well, well, a witch drives through town. I know it's it's uh, incredible. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, that's the only one, like if I could see that one, you know, we say I, I die a happy woman, but like I, that's my own, it's my nemesis. I've, I've had the opportunity twice and both times it was torted for, is that an English word? Torted? Thwarted. Thwarted. Th thwarted. Th thwarted. I feel like I'm saying twat, which is probably <laughs> not. It's, it's T, it's T, it's T, it's T E R T E D thwarted. No, I think I think I'm gonna. I think it's better. I'm gonna stick with twatted. It was I was twatted. It was just. So no, it was twatted. Both visits were twatted. Both visits were twatted as well. Twatted. New hashtag: whiskey fabric twatted. Yeah. One letter, same meaning. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I'm not English. I'm calling myself like that. Yeah. I need to drink yeah. something different. I need to drink something different. Where am I going to go? I've, I've moved on. I'm on Del Ewan now. I'm on the uh, Octave. I'm so. going to open. I'm going to show you guys a bottle that you probably don't know. Good. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, this is this has been great. Um, so, you guys. guys uh, thanks for sticking with us. I know we're, we're hitting almost two and a half hours, but uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, I've been loving this little chat with, <laughs> with Joanne. <laughs> Nobody warned you. <laughs> Listen, we've been, we've been here before. We're... This, this is what v is all about. Ah, Whiskey Fassel. Whiskey Fassel, 1993. Whiskey Fassel, limited edition. What kind, of during... duck, what kind of duck is that in there? Fuck if I know. I'm, I'm ducked if it's I know. A, it's a male. It's a boy duck. <laughs> it's a boy duck. It's this is a uh, 1993 Glen Keith, 24 okay. years old, 47.6 percent, bottled for Heads and Tails Canada. This was a birthday really? present. Uh, interestingly enough, by a person who knew fuck all about whiskey. <laughs> well, Thank well, you. Well, well, well Thank done you, there. Chris. Thank well, you, Chris. Well done, there, my Glen Keith. I know, right? While you're pouring your your duck, Ian has just poured a wild turkey. So I am going to stick with the theme, and I'm going to pour myself a little brown dog. All right, we're doing. Um, oh no, you need a bird. Oh, oh bird. Oh, I can't do bird. I'm on Dal Ewan. I'm sorry. Oh. I don't have a bird. I've got a little little brown dog. Do, do a little brown dog. That's yeah. Andrews, right? Yeah. That's Andrew, and this is yeah. the, the talk about, this is your Hungarian wine cast. Oh. Um, we talk about Hungarian virgin oak. This is a Hungarian so you wine. Know, you know Andrew. 
I do. I got to, I got to, I, I've known Andrew and his lovely wife since before the children were born. I feel I'm going to have to go through, I feel I'm going to have to go through and cry through my heart and working, to be honest. Oh, I, I, uh, it's <laughs> I really another one of those wonderful one. relationships that, you know, that was forged. I'm going to have to do it. I'm sorry. I'm going, I'm going for that. I'm working. I'm, I'm well enough already. <laughs> You're going to have a wee drum for Banksy. For Banksy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Andrew's one of these guys. He he pops up so so often in our conversations from um bloggers, uh authors to uh, indie bottlers, and he all always comes up uh, and yeah. it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's not surprising having known him for, for a few years as being a local lad to us, but yeah. for such a small company and, and kind of what they've done, the, the respect and the, and the knowledge that of them, yeah. I, you know, they're a company that the sky really, really is the limit. Um, I, I think they, they do things in the right way. They, they bottle the right spirit. They uh -huh. just have a really good ethos and we're, we're very, very proud to have them on our doorstep. And I have yet to be able to try what he's bottled only because oh, really? Yeah, because uh, I'm trying to think the last time I would have seen him would have been in 20, I want to say 2014 or 2015. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was they didn't, they didn't until 21, 2020. It was the first summer of um, COVID. They COVID. Launched their, um, yeah, go, we, we've got the full range at the shop. So if you are over in April, give me a shout. And, uh, oh, we'll my make God. Sure Definitely. Of, Definitely. Of, yeah, that's another one of those great, again, mine, mine are all whiskey stories, whiskey experiences. So we went to the, we had a huge whiskey fabric get together at the Artisan in Wisha. Okay. Familiar? I, I've heard of it, yeah. Is you gotta go. The, yeah. You gotta go. The Artisan in Wisha, you gotta go. And I don't get paid for any of these shout outs, by the way. I like, this is just like the people that I love, the people that I've met. We had a, like I say, we had a huge whiskey fabric evening at the, at the, at the artisan in Wisha. And uh, Andrew and I had met that night for the first time we sat together, you know, we drank whatever. And uh, my funny story, which my mother again hates that I tell is, you know, here we are chit-chatting about being the whiskey fabric and coming over and getting to meet everybody and talking along and and out of the blue, he says, well, if you're in the Speyside area, why don't you drop in, like drop in, I'll give you my address, just drop in and, and we can have a dram. And I was like, absolutely. Didn't even know what his last name was. I think at that point, it didn't matter. Like it was just, it's whiskey fabric. It's everybody we know. And then uh, later on, when I posted some of the photos, I did, I showed up at their house. We had supper together. We drammed. They, I played with the dogs. Like it, it was awesome. Right. I played with a little brown dog who was gone. And, uh, we, so I tell my mother this story and I'm showing her pictures later. And she's like, so you sat down beside him for dinner. I'm like, yes. She's like, and then you just went to his house in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and he gave you and lots he, of booze. And he yeah. gave you lots of booze. I'm like, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and, and you met these people on the interweb. I'm like, <laughs> interweb. I, I can see how this is disturbing to you <laughs> like, but but they're really nice people like you know she was mortified absolutely mortified that this is what was happening and this is what we were doing and like how i was meeting people on and just showing up at people's houses like she just could not fathom at all what i was talking about but andrew and his wife and his and his lovely dogs were just like he was a big um, Aaron fan, if I remember properly. Yes, still yeah. is. Their, oh, their first was an Aaron. Their first, yeah. Um, cool. And yeah, the um, I, I think Andrew, and he's he's one of these guys that he's so funny with. You know, he's got so much knowledge. He's, he's like the geek's geek. He just yeah. knows what's going on. Oh, oh, Russell's gone. Oh, we lost Russell. We've lost him. He'll, he'll come back. Okay. He's uh, we we don't we normally laugh about the uh, the Inverurie. So we're we're quite a big well, not a big time, but we've got twenty thousand in Inverurie. Um, mm -hmm. Ross was out in the what we call the sticks. Um, oh yes, in, in the foggy. Um, but his internet is nine times out of ten better than mine. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> uh, he's 
the, the last twice he's dropped out. But he's at that age, you know, where he's two and a half hours. He's uh, he's maybe just had to go to the gentleman's room. We don't know. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. but, yeah. We don't ask those kinds of questions. We don't. No, we don't need to. See. We, we had, I know you've got the, the, uh, the headphones on, but they're not portable, are they? They're plugged in. Oh, really? Your, your, your headphones, you've got. Yeah, mine are plugged in. Plugged in. Yeah. We, um, we, we have, we, during lockdown, we do virtual, t- we did virtual tastings, which we kind of do along today as well. Um, it's hybrids between um, in, in store tastings, and then we get the camera set up and people join in from home as well. Mm-hmm. And um, but during the the start of you know we do our, our fire um, drills and the the way the toilets are oh. and everything like that. Okay. It's yes. Yes. The tasting, and I now have to introduce this new one. Um, and if you're at home and you've got the portable headphones, please remove them before you go to the toilet because we <laughs> <laughs> because yes, we have please. had you know. There's, there's just this tinkling away, and uh, because people don't want to miss what we're talking about, and we'll just I'll nip to the toilet quickly, leave the headphones on in the toilet, and you hear everything. It's uh, uh, oh, so okay. we've got the toilet, please mute. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's good fun. Is it is the art? Is it sorry? Ian's just popped on in YouTube. Is the art is in the place, Greg, from the Water of Life film, enjoyed some whiskey infused burgers. I'm not sure. Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, Russell, when he jumps back in, he might. Uh, Russell and Greg have, have got quite close. So let's ask him when he comes back. Hopefully yes. he comes back. Hopefully he comes back. Um, Tobias says they do great food and a great whiskey selection. Makes sense there. Uh, Willis is upset because Russell's gone and we... Russell, we're not uh, Willis, we're not talking about the Telegraph poll. Um, I don't know if you've watched any of our previous blethers in preparation for tonight. Yes, Russell I did. Had, <laughs> the, 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 um, when, when, when Russell passes on or retires, whatever it is, I'm going to do a collage of tele, him saying Telegraph poll, and it will last oh about God. an hour. Oh, honestly. my God. Oh, he's Tell back. Fools, I've just come in at the right Here time. Here we go. Here we go. So, so we've just finished up t- talking about telegraph poles, Russell. You missed that boat. Oh. We, are um, I, we did want to ask you about Ian. Do you, did you speak to Greg? Has he ever been into the artisan and drunk whiskey and cheeseburgers? That's Greg uh, Schwartz. Yeah, Greg Schwartz. Have you spoken to Greg about the artisan? No, I've never spoken about that. No. No. Yeah. no I, talk about, I, I don't talk about burgers. I talk about telegraph poles and tractors. <laughs> Come in, <laughs> Um Anyway, so that that's where I was before the internet crash. So there, there he is. Oh, okay. there. He is. Ooh. There he is. Nice. Have you have you have you tried this? No. Okay. Well, we better keep some for you. Okay. Okay. Good. This is the um. This so is the round dog again. The, that we're in. And this is the Arden Merkin for Banksy. Nice. Have you seen the video? Yes. Yes. And, yes, and and you cried like we I all did. did. I did. It, yeah, tears yes. of happiness. Tears of yes, happiness. indeed, absolutely. Mm. I did mess him to see what he put. Where are you tonight, by the way? So he hasn't responded to that. But yeah. Um. So yes, yeah. yeah, so what, what we're we end up bigging up Andrew. It's um. Well, <laughs> For such a small company as they are, I was just saying while you were you were offline, um, everyone knows them, and everyone the, the the huge amount of respect that they've got for such a two guys doing really good stuff is uh, phenomenal. Um, yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was going to talk about the gin situation, but maybe I shouldn't. Why not? Well, don't might, might give me a row for talking a little burned dog gin because he's, he's got his own gin. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. When when do I ever give you a row? You give me a row one night. I came home. I came home from a tasting uh, to Meldrum House, and I messaged you. I messaged you to see a little brown dog first, Falk House second, yeah. and he said we're, we're going to have to stop putting that bloody gin on. <laughs> 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 I 
Oh, come on. We're talking two, two great gents, but, but it, it's, it's not about the gym with Little Brown Dog. It's about the story. It's about these guys. Yeah. yeah. Like Absolutely. us, you know, like, like us, I think, I think we've got a great story. I think what we do, I, I know I'm biased. I, I love every whiskey shop. I love the whole story. I love what we do. I think, but I think we've got a great story. We're, we're genuine, honest guys that, that want to have fun and do what we do. We want to sell stuff. We want to engage. And that and that's exactly makes makes whole ethos is about involving as many people as possible. Yeah. We we started a a, a sort of what we called a um, an embassy mm -hmm. that was all about mm -hmm. getting guys involved or guys and girls involved and having conversations and sharing and swapping and all that kind of stuff. And all that actually happened was it became a flipping club oh. because everybody signed up to buy the the bottles that they could flip. So we had to stop it. Um, so, so we've we've moved on to the the academy, which is all about our academy is not about um, academic mm -hmm. learning. It's about immersion. Okay. Immersion in the whole experience of what whiskey is about. So you'll go and see the studies. You'll get behind the scenes. You'll you'll go and you know have your hands full of malt barley, mm. and you'll go and meet farmers. And that's what we want to do. And that, that's exactly the whole kind of story here. So. Um, it's that, that's what we want to do. It's it's not about the kind of it's experiential. Yeah, it's all about experience of whiskey. It is about the experience. Yeah, sometimes and it you, has nothing you, to do with the whiskey. That's that's the whole point of the jigsaw yeah. puzzle, right? So, so therefore, I get ridiculed for being obsessed with tractors, obsessed with combine <laughs> harvesters, obsessed with telegraph. <laughs> and then, listen, my telegraph pole obsession has got nothing to do with me. It's become a me and Ian McAllister thing. Ian McAllister is my real life husband. Oh, okay. Good um, to know. And, Good to know. And we, and we will we will live a life in some and he's probably what he's maybe watching this, maybe he's not. But we're gonna live a life where we're gonna have telegraph poles in our garden that will be our ornaments because oh that's a thing. Of course, so, it has to be. So Joy, just just as a back background, you're probably <laughs> the only person in the room, virtual room tonight, who doesn't know what we're talking about. I have no um, idea. <laughs> so, Russell and Ian, so Ian gave us a, a random fact about Campbelltown that the first numbered. No, no, it wasn't a random fact. No, it wasn't a random. There was nothing random about it. He was actually talking to the engineer. Yeah, he stopped yeah. and spoke. So this is a personal connection. He so stopped and spoke to the engineer who was working on a, who was working on a telecom in this, in, in this telegraph pole, and the, the engineer happened to say to him, "This is the oldest telegraph pole in Scotland." Right. Mm -hmm. Russell, <laughs> Russell, Russell, that story was riveting. You should tell me about the time you bought gum. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, can we move on from the thing? Well, can, we, can, we, can we get another guest on, please? Can we get you the <laughs> Can we get you the uh, so, Here, look, I'm going to give you. There we go. There you go. Who's that? There it is. Look at that. Hey, look at that wee boy. Look at that wee boy. Yeah, he's not. He's not a wee anymore. He's grown. He's a grown up. He's a. He's a, well, he's a man. you know, now. there's that. I, and then of course, I, I believe. I believe he's actually on the peninsula just now. So one of the best he's publicans. Not, yeah. Paul Paul McDonough from. Uh, Andrew's Andrew's on Arden Merkins now, so he's not going to have any signal whatsoever. No. Have you been, no. Have you been to Arden Merkins, Joanne? Yes. Yeah. You don't get. There's no internet. It's I think we got lost. We we ended. Fantastic. I don't know how we ended up there. We lost we've a got, bit. We've, we've got Rick joining us on Facebook. Rick Johnson, who is joining us in, in a little over a week's time for our uh, third academy. Um, so he's saying good evening. He's an island just now. He's he's warming up properly for for the the Highland Academy. He's All a right. pre season trainer. He's he's doing he, pre camp yeah. training. Yeah. <laughs> Which is is absolutely great. He's not fucking about. No, no. As you should so never be I, if you're talking about the Whiskey Academy. Can't can't wait to, to have you over, Rick. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be belted. Um so so hopefully one day Joanne will get you over for it. Um when do you normally so, have it? Is it like a specific time of year? Maybe do twice a year. Um okay. first week of March and second week of September. Say again. First week of March, second week oh. of September. Nobody fucking flies to Scotland in March. Come on. 
Uh, Johnson did. <laughs> Maybe he's, is he from Germany? Where is he from? No, he's from the States. Oh, well, that explains everything. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I, I would go in September probably because I that's traditionally when I when I go to uh, to Scotland is either May or September. Mm. Well, yeah. there's, there's, there's one or two places available this year. Let's wait a week Ooh. for September. We've got um, Tamara Wagner. Do you know Tamara? Why oh, that name rings a bell? Yeah, she's coming over in September. She's going to she's actually going to take part in the 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 the, the full class the full school, but um, she's going to do a part. Um, do we're going to do a whiskey class with cooking. Oh, nice, nice. So, so that'll be something a bit different. Um, yep. So the, the, the general principle of the academy is the same every year, the same distilleries almost. Um, we we, we want to showcase Aberdeenshire mm -hmm. as, as a as a whiskey region in, in almost its own right. So okay. Glenglass, Glendronach, Glengarry, um, Ardmore, these kind of guys. But uh, we have a space out day, and then we go and we do a host of visits to Malton factories, the cooperage, um, and a little bit of the behind the scenes things that you can't see as a, as a whiskey drinker, you have to kind of be a bit geeky and come on an academy to, to join in. So, cool. so, uh, so yeah, we're really looking forward to it. We've had, um, we've had conversations with Billy Walker, during it, Stuart Buchanan, Robin Lang, oh. um, and so on and then, then, uh, a very intimate gig. I think it was quite possibly the smallest gig he's ever done on our first trip. Just to the dinner table. Just nice. Oh, wow. He sang three or four songs, just just him. Yeah. Oh, I love his book, too. His book was awesome. I was disappointed he didn't sing Rothas Loons. Um, I, I, I had it on. I was, so I, I had a tour uh, on Monday. What day? Where are we now? Thursday. So Monday, I had a tour. Yeah, I know. It's so difficult to understand. I had a, I had a tour group from the shop out to Glen Grant. Um, and then we went to Glenallachy. So we headed through Rothis past the old Copper Donick potential, you know, the, the so I, I played Rothis Loons at full blast um, and the, the guys loved it. Oh, wow. Loved it. it cool. Cool, cool. That's mm. awesome. My gosh. Mm. And it makes me, it makes me miss Scotland so much. Cause I mean, Canada has wonderful experiences and we're lucky enough that we have people to come over like, you know, and, and help us create our, our events or our, uh, our tastings or I don't want to call them trade shows because here in Canada, it's kind of different. We don't really do like trade shows. We do full out festivals that last like six days in some cases. Mm -hmm. So, but there's still nothing like going to the Mecca. Like there's just nothing like going to Scotland and just back to grassroots, you know, and wandering into a whiskey shop or going to a whiskey mad academy or, I mean, Spirit of Speyside is, is like I say, the whiskey Mecca. I mean, you can do just about anything. It's where I got to sit with uh, Michael Urquhart and Charlie McLean in a small pub. Like I think there was yeah. 12 of us. Right. And intimate, like, just and again surreal because you're you you as a whiskey geek you understand what you're experiencing i couldn't even tell you what the hell was in our glasses and it didn't matter i was listening to michael urquhart and charlie mclean have a fantastic conversation and we just sat like with our you know with our glasses and and just listened like it was it's phenomenal you don't get that you don't get that in in other places like you do in scotland uh, yeah, it, it is. It's it's the absolute, you know, the beauty of whiskey, the beauty of the beauty of the industry, yeah. is when you, you get the chance to speak to these guys. Like we're speaking to you, in a, you know, in a pub, and these guys could be your absolute heroes, yeah. but they also respect your opinion on mm -hmm. on everything. You know, on we, we spoke to to Billy Walker in one of these blethers, um, and we're talking kind of football. That was probably one of the few occasions we did speak about. But, you know, you talk about everything and you realise that these are just day-to-day -day guys who are yep. very, very good at the job. They're not superstars. They are to us. Yeah. But for them, they are guys who are just doing their job uh, and mm -hmm. will quite happily sit in the pub with you and chat. And, uh, you know, you, you talk about your experience with whiskey and they're equally as interested in your yep. story as you are to learn about them. And I think that really brings together what the industry is all about and, and the, the wider community. Yeah. I, I had a chance to interview uh, Richard Patterson when he came over to Canada one year and 
sat down with them and like, of course, all done up. You know what I call, what I call, st this is Joanne McGinnis. Like I'm wearing my sweatshirt. I got, I got my slippers on. <laughs> they're gorgeous, but they're, they're definitely oh. Scottish. Yeah, I'm, wearing, uh, I'm wearing my pajamas under this jumper. So, so. This is what I'm saying, right? So, yeah. but I mean, Richard was what I call stage Richard, right? And then we chit chat yeah. and we talked. And, yeah. And then at the end of the day, like at the end of the interview, you know, we, we, we relaxed and we took the, we took the, the, the recording off and you know, we just chit chatted for a couple of minutes. And, and I think he said it best and I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I say that, but I was just like, man, you know, you're, you're just so personable and, and you're just, you're just like the rest of us. You're just an everyday guy. And he said, look, at the end of the day, I go home, I put my velour tracksuit on, I walk my dog, I pick up his poop, just like everybody else. Like, and it was just like at that moment where you kind of go, yeah. you're absolutely right. You go home, oh, yeah. you do your laundry, you, you pick up the dog poop, you make dinner, just, just like the rest of us. Right. But I think, again, we forget that because they become those those people that we put up on a pedestal because of their stature and because of what they've done for whiskey fabric yeah. and for the whiskey industry. And exactly. yeah, there are stars, right? Yeah. Yeah. Richard is one who's on my bingo card that I haven't stamped off yet. <laughs> He's <laughs> big. Of, He's big. Yeah. Like in the yeah. sense, like I'm five foot three in stature, but my personality is seven foot two. And I know that about me. Like it's something I just accept. It's like, I, mm -hmm. I, the minute you switch me on, I turn into this seven foot two, whatever. And Richard Patterson is the opposite. He's a fairly, I wouldn't say he's a tall man, but he doesn't, he, he commands a performance when he's on stage. But then when, when he's himself, he's just like, he's just like the rest of us. Like he really is totally, it's a different feel. Whereas I'm seven foot two all the time. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> You sure that he's seven foot two tonight. Um, Thank you. It's, it's been absolutely, wonderful mm -hmm. speaking to you um it's been i remember looking for the first time um and it was about 50 minutes and i was like holy crap how quick has that That's gone three hours. Um, yeah. and yeah 245 um it, it's been incredible speaking to you it's been so much fun absolutely i hope the guys at home have enjoyed it um anyone who's watching retrospectively if you have any questions please feel free pop it in the chat we wonder it afterwards and uh Anything we can't answer, certainly we'll we'll fire through to Joanne, and if you're happy to to answer, um, always. Uh, what we what we have to say is the winner the winner of the ball is going to get marriage. If you get the if you get the bon if you get the bonus ball, guys, you get a hug. Um, so that's. I was hoping you'd announce who actually won. Like I'd like to see exactly who I'm betrothed, betrothed, betrothed. Who I'm, who I, who I. Betrothed, betrothed. Yeah. betrothed. Listen, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be here. You're going to be staying here for this is your future. Scotland's your future. Oh, I wish. It's going to be great. I wish. It's all about it. Yeah. Listen, you guys. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. As thank always. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for coming along. Um, yeah. It's been wonderful having you here. Um, guys, uh, watching uh, next week, we've got Scott Adamson. Um, Scott's been on before. Um, we all love Scott. He's a great guy. So all things Tomatin, Kubokin, uh, whatever. Um, I'll come back and, and harass him for you. Oh, please do. Please, please do. do. Please do. Please do. Yeah. It's absolutely wonderful having you on, John. Um, <laughs> he is on YouTube saying he's looking forward to the book when, when it's released. Yeah. 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 It might sure. be a while, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah, you have plenty of time. I do. Yeah. Um, but just to remind you, don't, don't, oh. don't leave us when we go, Joanne. You, you stay on. We're just okay. going to go off live just shortly. So. Sure. Um, good night, guys. And um, we'll see you next week uh, with, with Scott. Um, yeah. Slide and, uh, and Rick, Rick, we will see you um, next week in person. Very soon. Slide Absolutely. Sure. Slide good night, everybody. Good night.